What is going on, guys and girls? Today is Friday, March 20th. Thank God it's Pod Day, and welcome to Episode 3 of Can't Stop Playing. I'm your host, Zach Ghost Robo, and joining me is the sickest host this side of the equator, Gabriel Iglesias. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You triggered it. Nah, yeah, I've been sick all week. I haven't been able to even make a video in a week. I've been... Playing basketball, uh, though, apparently. Hey, I've, been, I've been trying to play basketball as a remedy for my cold. I've had a cold, haven't been able to breathe. I don't think that's the way what it works. What kind of doctor do you have? <laughs> yeah, because I, no, I, I don't think that that's a, a a good way to get around a cold. Well, no, I figured, <laughs> hey, you go out there, you get tired, get some heavy breathing going on. Maybe your your your, <laughs> your nasal cavities, even if that's even a real thing, will clear up. My thinking is all messed up, guys. Don't listen to me. Wow. Did you have some good drainage? Was, it, was the flow, like, really... Nah, it, it, it was fun though. When, you know, okay. getting back to basketball had been a couple years, and it, it's a blast. Trying to warm your heart with a little bit of excitement, get, yeah, get it back on track. All yeah. right. Not sick is our host from north of the border, Max Blitzwinger, straight from Canada. What, what's the latest from from that side? Oh, we still uh, have no electricity. Um, igloos. I have to literally have 42 birds holding up a stick in the air <laughs> to have an internet connection for this call. Cause... It's like the enchanted tiki room from Disney. They're just all, yeah. all your yeah, friends. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's, a good, that's a good comparison. There you go. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing new in Canada, which uh, is pretty smooth sailing for us, so that's good. Everything there is, is something new in the world of insects, though. I had to bring this up. I'm a, 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 a wait, 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 hold on. When's the last time somebody said that? <laughs> There's hey, something new in the world of insects. Can't stop playing. We bring you all the latest and greatest uh, one-liners. But this is this is an article um, about Dr. Justin Schmidt. You guys know about Dr. Justin, Justin Schmidt? Justin Schmidt. Um, no. Justin Timberlake. Justin Bieber. J My neighbors know. were the Schmidts when I was little. They, that <laughs> dude. You ever have this neighbor? Okay, you see movies and there's always the family who is completely like old-fashioned and they have like a shotgun and a tire swing. Those were my neighbors when I was growing up. Like wow. I, I'm playing I've never PlayStation. lived in a place where guns are allowed. Oh, speaking of, I'm sorry to, to interject here. <clears throat> we were driving back from from the basketball game last night. More crime and, stories? No, no, no. Oh, One, okay, no. here we go. <laughs> um, and we were driving back, and I see this house. This house has been there for years. I've lived in the same house now like for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm after okay. back here. And I had never seen a sign, but it right at the door it says, we don't call 911, and then there's a shotgun there. I'm like, whoa. Wow. I mean, that was kind of, sort of this guy's philosophy. Like Halloween, people would be like running through his yard, and he'd like walk out there and scream. Uh, and then his his boy, <laughs> I'm gonna call him his boy because he was just that kind of guy. His boy was a, a pitcher for like baseball pitcher. He had a tire swing. He'd throw baseballs through the tire swing. It was just like a really weird world to grow up in. But but anyways, the entomologist, Dr. Justin Schmidt, uh, he's taking like he's embarking upon a quest. I feel like everyone needs to know about. Um, we'll talk about Battlefield Hardline, Final Fantasy 15, <laughs> Uncharted, <laughs> Nintendo, but what's most important what's is most that important? Dr. Justin Schmidt, mm -hmm. he is trying to make a scale, a tiered system. He's categorizing insect stings by their pain in a rating system uh, from level 1 all the way up to level 4. I just want to <laughs> know if you guys can guess any of the level four creatures with the most painful stings. The best part of this list, though... It has to be bugs, right? So we're not yeah. counting bites. We're specifically no. talking stings. Stings. Okay. Yeah. And, and the, thing that, the thing that really makes this list like a worthwhile read is that he gives you a little bit of, like, like flavor text. So, for example, he's got stuff like, the pain is so immediate and intense, it shuts down all illusions of life as normal. Imagine sticking a finger in a 240-volt... Does life become socket. strange? Pretty bit. Does. Oh. Or, like, just... The way that he says these things are absolutely insane. Bold and unrelenting. This pain is like someone using a power drill to excavate your ingrown toenail. What? Oh my like god! The, the way what that he's a failed that. science fiction writer. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Cause he, I guarantee you, he doesn't know what that feels like. <laughs> okay, quick question. Yeah. Two things I need to clarify yeah. now, before we make our guesses. Number sure. one is, did he experiment this on himself? He says that he has been stung over a thousand times by 150 oh, different God. species, most of them accidentally from traveling in rainforests and, and other places, but occasionally he does purposely get a sting in order to see what it's like. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and then second question, is it yeah. just the sting itself or the – because, for example, a bee sting, if you've ever been – He's talking about the sting in the post, yeah. Okay, so the post is included in this. The post pain is It included. hurts a lot because the bee sting itself is not horrible, but then the after pain is oh, Okay, all right. So then, you know, hmm. um, 
Spiders don't count because they don't sting you. They bite you. So, for example, like... A I'm going to a scorpion. A fire ant is level 1. A honey bee is level 2. When we move into the level 4 range, we've got the number one worst sting in the world is the bullet ant. A bullet Ooh. ant. He claims that this bullet ant that's found in the South American rainforest is an inch long, and its venom-filled sting maintains its agonizing effect for 12 to 24 hours. And... Uh, he says it's like walking over flaming charcoal with a three-inch nail embedded in your heel. He doesn't know that. That's my all right. That's my issue with this. He doesn't know what that feels like, so he can't say that's what it's and, like. And, well, I know, but the other thing is like, how many people will be able to like, oh yeah, okay, now it makes sense how bad that hurts. It's like you can't really just like be like. All right, all right. So, so throw some more level fours at us. So, all right, so, so you got. On there. There's gotta be scorpions. No, there's just. A, I think it's just insects. I don't know if a scorpion counts. Is yeah. a scorpion not classified as an insect? I don't Scorpion think it's like a, a demon. Oh, okay. well, it's not a demon, but it's probably <laughs> there's, a, there's a demon classification. People are gonna be correcting this in the comments. Oh, of course, the scorpion is an insect. I don't know why. I feel like scorpions. I, might I don't be know. It might be. He only has two at level four: the bullet ant and then the tarantula hawk wasp, which is a wasp that goes to sting and kill tarantulas. <laughs> tarantula hawk wasp. That sounds like three animals. animals I hate. Yeah, <laughs> Gabe, we're gonna integrate some pictures in here. Like, if you're listening on iTunes, you can just imagine this stuff. But if you're watching the video version, you can um, just imagine that stuff. So, yeah, just think. Think of a combination of a tarantula, a hawk. Uh, <laughs> this thing is together. gigantic. Like it's. Okay, I have to see this. I'm gonna Google this. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it into the the Skype chat so you yeah, guys can. Yeah, drop it. Okay. And for those of you watching the video, I'll drop it in the video. You guys can see it too. Yeah. Speaking of video, you can find this podcast on YouTube. Uh, we'll put a link in the show notes. Or if you're watching on YouTube, you can find this podcast on iTunes. Make sure to download and subscribe to the show. There will be bonus episodes coming throughout the weeks and months. And even if you are just watching on iTunes or watching on YouTube, listening. It does help to do both of them for us. It's sort of a way to give us a high five, give us a hug. Everything is totally free, so if you want to help us out, support the show, go download it on iTunes, go view it on YouTube. That would mean a lot. Now, though, let's turn our attention towards the world of gaming. Um, this week was a so slow we're week. Off the incense, we're off the insects? I mean, you want to can't, well, can't stop biting, they, can't stop stinging? Uh, dude, they look so creepy. I hate insects. But all right, all right, let's, let's get into it. Final Fantasy, Hardline, all these amazing things. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of cool stuff, but I think the biggest news is Nintendo's, like, strange behavior this morning. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, they commit to developing for mobile devices, and at the same time, they also commit to making a new dedicated... Awesome. Hardcore, yeah, gaming console, yeah. which neither of which are surprising at all, right? Well, I don't think so, but apparently some people view this as a move of total desperation and, and pathetic behavior. No, it's not that. It's a, it's a natural move, I, I think. Well, it was a natural move three years ago. But you say that, but but from from their position, you don't see Sony PlayStation games on iPhone, so natural. Yeah, because they don't make the kind of games that that go on mobile platforms. Actually, mm -hmm. I mean, um. Uh, what what's the Fat Princess that has a mobile game now? Oh, does it? Yeah. And is it an iOS Android? Yeah, it's it's on iOS. Like it came up on my phone the other day. Like, oh, check out this new Fat Princess uh, game. I had I have a press email for it. So yeah, they're they're definitely doing stuff. Interesting. So Nintendo just to get a little factual is partnering with Dina D E N A, um, which is a Tokyo-based company that does mobile stuff. Uh, they are making original games based on Nintendo IP, so they're not porting anything. This is going to be wholly new games. Um, the first one's coming this fall, um, and all Nintendo IP will be eligible for exploration Let me guess, it's by the be Alliance. A Candy Crush with Mario faces. Well, all right. original. Um, one more interjection. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep doing that, right? But PlayStation Mobile is a thing. I didn't even know they have a game called Run Sackboy Run, which is probably a free runner okay. with Sackboy. Okay, yeah, uh, I, I get that, but still, it's like it, I don't know. Like we've talked about how many times have people said, "Oh, let's have Pokemon on mobile." For how long? Ever since iPhones have been around, people have been talking about Pokemon on mobile, right? For yeah. sure. So I, I think that Nintendo is more likely. Like they were the one that people were like, they have a whole console that is purely driven by predominantly their own games. Mm -hmm. uh, and mobile experiences, so that's why people were asking for mobile games. So uh, I don't know as to why they did this move. Is this just literally for them, just like, hey, we could make extra money? Well, I think it's a way to just totally expand the audience. If you think about the mobile market, it, it's just ripe and prime for Nintendo. Nintendo is very family friendly, and they are 
very mechanics driven. So if you're going to try and translate Final Fantasy 15 to mobile, it gets goofy. But if you're going to take, they're not going to be making these games. They're just giving them the IP. So remember that. Well, well, well I'm sure they're going to make some eventually. I, I don't think. I, well, eventually maybe, but I don't think that this partnership is about Nintendo. Like it, I think it, that this so, partnership is literally the same thing as like if Sony came out and said, "Oh yeah, we gave the uh, Uncharted IP to." But Zing. but Max, like to clarify, both companies. This is quote from the press release: "Will develop and operate new game apps, combining." Leveraging the strength of Nintendo's IP and game development skills in combination with Dina's world-class expertise, so it sounds like they're dual developing these. So you think you think, and you think that would be a good thing then? Absolutely. I just think Why like not? if you're gonna take because the better the experiences become on mobile, those games they can't charge forty dollars for that kind of game. They don't the need less, to. They're gonna start eating away major. from their experiences on. Uh, the 3DS. No, they think, could be completely different. I think they have the best chance to really keep them separate. Again, because think about... You're not going to do, like, oh, new Super Mario Bros. 3 on iPhone, right? But there is more of an opportunity to captivate a mobile audience with a Mario-style runner or a Kirby-style, you know... Game than there is, I think, taking Nathan Drake yeah, or Master what, Chief. What's the what's the point of having Nintendo get involved then? Just give them the IP. There's to nothing original about making. Assurance. But what do you mean? How do you quality assure a runner? It's the, the well, mechanics. I don't know what they're gonna do. I yeah, mean, they could do more than runners. I just think that, like, again, this is one of those things that a lot of people who are on the Nintendo bandwagon and kind of give them a lot of passes. It's like, immediately, it's going to be fantastic. It's I like, think it will be fantastic, and I'm not on the Nintendo bandwagon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not you think all. I am? Uh, I think the what's, big, your, what's my favorite games? Three of them are Zeldas. I think the big... <laughs> I love Zelda. The big, like, crux of this is going to be, do they make wholly original games, or yeah, do they just paste on saying. Mario? They pointed to Puzzle and Dragons... Mushroom Kingdom version, or whatever that's called, which all that is is reskinning a exactly. pre-existing game. They also pointed to Pokemon Shuffle, which is basically a Pokemonized, you know, match three. So do they just say, let's let's think of popular, you know, iPhone games. Oh, take uh, Jetpack Candy Joyride, Crush. yeah, oh, and yeah. all of a sudden you've got Mario instead of Mr. Jetpack and T- Candy take Crush. Take a game of War and make it like Hyrule Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you see, at that point, then, I don't understand why. If, if that's what they do, then great. Like, But then it's p- purely just a financial move. It's not yeah, like it, Nintendo sees the mobile market as a big potential. Like They see it as a big potential financially, and that's That's it. how I look at it. Yeah, completely financial. I'm saying they are going to make bank on this. P- possibly. Oh, of course, because, more. again, people will see, oh, there's a Mario Runner, and it's official, blah, blah, blah. Of course, you're going to go ahead and play that. So it's like, uh, but at the same time, I don't see Nintendo, right now at least, especially because they just released a new 3DS. The sure. 3DS is selling well for them. I don't see Nintendo being like, hey, let's make a, a game that is of the same quality and experience level as oh, for sure 3DS no. over on mobile. Even though they can do it. And honestly, who knows if they did make something along those lines. Like, let's say... Uh, they do some sort of a remaster of a Pokemon game, like maybe, or something, whatever it is, and they put it up there for, let's say, 10 bucks. They might be able to quantity sell way more. Now, of course, then you're discounting the sales of units because they try to sell 3DSs thanks to Pokemon. So, And it may be something where they say, hey, we're going to keep our cartridge-based games and franchises separate, but like eShop-style stuff, they've really gone into some interesting you know, things with Nintendo themselves and indie devs on the Wii U eShop, the 3DS eShop. They could say, hey, the eShop games are going to now be on mobile and 3DS, which wouldn't really cannibalize the main sales of like, oh, Zelda Link Between Worlds or... You know, Xenoblade Chronicles. Also of note, though, is that they are going to be working together with Dina to develop an online membership service that is going to be accessible from smartphones, PCs, and Nintendo systems, including the Wii U, 3DS, yeah, and whatever that's their, their console is. Dipping their toes into the PlayStation yeah. Network and Xbox Live because they would you don't guys, have a paid service for it. Right. How would you guys feel about like just older games? Because I don't know how like knowledgeable you guys are on this, but people are already like jailbreaking their iPhone yeah, yeah, and, sure. and, and playing there's Super Mario later. 3 yeah. on their phone anyways through emulation, mm-hmm. so why not sell that for a couple of dollars? I don't think there's any chance that they bring a full game to the iPhone. I don't think that I don't think their idea is to replicate those full I, It's just games. weird, because I remember, I, I don't know why, maybe I, I could be 100% wrong on this, but for some reason I remember three years ago or so, that Nintendo was specifically adamant about them saying that they feel like 
go into the mobile market is like cheap. You're gonna cheapen their games yeah, or something they said like that. that. That's they what did. they said. Yeah. So that's why I don't know. Like you see, based on their mind and kind of where they are, the way they look at it is like if we release it there, that's it. It's instantly the property has become cheapened. Now maybe this step with Dina is gonna be kind of like a building block towards them saying, hey, what if we did do a Link? Or, or a Zelda mm. release, and then no, we'll just make it for like three bucks or five bucks or something. Um, I, mean, I think it's mostly an audience possible, grab. But... Like they they suffer so much with exposure and and mind share with the Wii U. If you can tap into the, the younger market, if you can tap in even to the older market who wants fun mobile games, perhaps this is a way to regain some focus, regain some attention. You pull someone in who's like, man, that Link character, he's pretty awesome. Come by the Nintendo NX, which is their next system, and play the full, you know big boy game, it could be a way just to try to somehow thrust themselves back into the public eye where they've kind of fallen off in terms of home console, you know, it's true. awareness. Yeah, it's tricky because I don't see, like, you see the mobile market, it is driven by the uh, Candy Crush player, the person who sits at the dentist and plays for 30 seconds before their appointment, or uh, somebody who's, like, on the way to something, or whatever it is, you know, I, so... I don't know how many of those people are like, oh yeah, I want to play a Zelda game, you know. So no, but I, still, I, I'm not sure. I think that the experiences that people want on mobile are those like of, again, most people. There will be hardcore gamers sure. who play mobile will also want the more unique experiences, but most of them will be like the Jetpack Joyrides, the Flappy Bird, the Angry Bird. It's a lot more of the drop okay. in for 30 minutes, drop out, you're done. All right, but. Jetpack Joyride, why not just put Mario with, with a jetpack and that instantly sells more? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that's what it's going to be. That's yeah, okay. yeah. My, my personal opinion is that they're looking to replicate the success of the Wii and how they captured that was by taking non-traditional gamers and saying, hey, this is really fun, come buy our Wii and now you're a console gamer. If they can do that in, in a similar fashion with mobile, maybe you have a newfound success. They're talking about revealing much more on their new system, the Nintendo NX in it's 2016. Be called NX, right? It can't be called NX. So what's yeah, it I mean, called called NX? Uh, like, I was trying to think what NX like is X the tenth, but then they actually this will be their eleventh home con or like well, I mean the console. thing about those things like they usually have no bearing on what the console is so, actually sure. called. Re remember the dolphin and the, I mean I just I wouldn't be surprised if it was that based on the Wii U or like the 2DS, 3DS, new 3DS. You never know with them how how goofy they're gonna get. But yeah, most likely it's a code name. But they they do seem to be kind of going two opposite directions a little bit. Like hey, we're we're dipping into mobile, but like let's reassure you, we have a game dedicated console. There was a slight worry that they they registered some health and fitness trademarks in the past. Mm -hmm. Would this be some weird? No, instead they're saying their next console. Which, by the way, they haven't revealed if it is portable or home. We're just assuming. Well, home. they just released a new 3DS, so it sure. can't be another 3DS already. Is it going to be a dedicated game platform? And this is where people will start to think about, well, they're talking about an integrated online service. Are they going to do sort of that plug-and-play console where you can play the games at home and then you can also take them on the road with you? That has been sort of the, the thought of what Nintendo would do next as opposed to just like a powerhouse box. I don't. I, I, th I think that's going to be a little too quick, too many, too many things too quickly. You know what I mean? Like I think that that's kind of a big switch from what they traditionally do. I wouldn't be surprised if this is going to be kind of maybe the bridging console, the one that they try out maybe more online features and kind of drive the more Xbox Live and PlayStation. Uh, network experiences, and then the next one after that might be Slow already. Slow steady. Well, how many more well, consoles it's Nintendo. do they have in them? I mean, they did say that it'll be a de this is these are the quotes: dedicated game system. This is translated quotes, and it utilizes a brand new concept. Iwata will talk more about it next year, and which means absolutely nothing. Of, of course not, but it could <laughs> be that you sell a Wii U style box with a gamepad style controller that you can just take with you. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I would be surprised if they jumped to that right away. I would be surprised. Because usually I think that if they do something that's like really big and different, it's like the Wii, where we saw like they tried to do something very, very like gameplay driven. I don't know if Nintendo is um, savvy enough in that field of like, you know, social media and everything. Sure. Like they're a little behind on that stuff, in my opinion. So I don't see them jumping to that, but who knows? The thing that surprises me the most is that. That means that probably Zelda Wii U is like our last big game. 
Yeah, I mean, nothing is announced for 2016. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you think about it, like this is going to be like the last big release, right? Because we have the only things we know are still coming is what Yoshi, Star, Star, Star Fox. Fox, Zelda, and, and, and Splatoon, a Mario game of some right? kind. There, there will be another okay. Mario game. Okay, so I mean, they have Mario if, Maker, which is looking that, to be more and more impressive. Do you think that that Mario game might be like a crossover title where they'll do like the real question is how consoles? dare you forget Splatoon? Oh, I said Splatoon! Splatoon! You said Splatoon. it? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said Splatoon. Oh, I didn't hear you. That's, uh, yeah, I'm just guessing that Zelda is going to be the the last so. release. And then the but... thinking there is, like, do they then announce this at E3 and release it in the fall? Well, they said we're not hearing about it till next year, so... Right, so if they, if they say, hey, E3 2016, check out our new Nintendo, and it's out in fall... If, if they're not going to really pimp out the 2016 Wii U lineup, then I think that... Is is the conclusion I'm led to believe? If you can't go a whole year with no games, yeah. I don't think they'd wait till Christmas 2017. There's no yeah. way they can fill two more full years of Wii U releases. Yeah, and they don't have the third party support. So yeah, I think a new console is coming sooner rather than later. And which is awesome to me. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm super excited to see what they do. A lot of people uh, frame this very negatively. Oh, Nintendo's desperate. Oh, they're giving up. You have to adjust as things happen. The Wii U is profitable for them. The games they make are their own and are very profitable. The 3DS is incredibly successful and profitable. So I think from their mindset, the way that they're running this race is different than Microsoft and Sony. So to them, as you can see... They're zigzagging in the race. Like. Well, and their timeline and trajectory are totally, totally not matched up with the other two. They don't seem to care. They're on their own like wavelength, their own sort of set of rules. And so to them... Yeah, the Wii U hasn't been as successful as they hoped, and so it's time to start moving to the next phase. But I don't think that's an admission of failure. It's just anytime something stops selling, if the PS4 stops selling, PS5 talks would drum up as well. And even even if it is a desperation move, like most impactful things come from that. Like you know, when your back's against the wall and you don't necessarily. I guess I just don't see it like that. If they're, if they're making so much bank, how how are their backs against the wall? Their games. What, are the well, I do, it's ridiculous to say that they are not trying to do what Microsoft and Sony is doing. No matter what, they are. <laughs> they're competing in a marketplace where being first is the number one goal. I think so they've like, given up on, on trying to do what they're doing. I, I get okay. If they've given up on, on what they're doing, why are they doing this new uh, integration? So are you expecting this to be a powerhouse? Online? This is 100% Nintendo trying to adjust to the failure of the Wii U. It did not succeed in what, especially financially, in terms of success with how well like it transitions between the Wii to the Wii U, it's a huge downgrade for them. Like The Wii was a massive sales success, and then this is a complete yes. death. The, the other thing that the Wii U has created is 100% guaranteed is that now they have to rebuild their relationships with third party. Like, mm -hmm. Because they their, those relationships were just completely burned. Like, even on the Wii, third parties weren't ecstatic about it because the only attach rate that was happening with the Wii was with Nintendo games. People weren't buying a lot of third-party games on the Wii. All right, so, so then they're, they're, they're going to have to rebuild with this. All right, so then there's a huge, huge issue. The only way Nintendo can get some of those relationships back is if they make a console that is so like the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 that publishers and developers can put them on all three simultaneously. So they're going to need to have a regular controller. But why, why do you think that's even their goal? If you look at the history, N64 well, super well, successful, that's what, I don't know what failure, that's what. Wii super successful, Wii U failure, if you want to label it that, none of them had great third-party support anywhere. I mean, N64 only had a couple hundred games over the whole life cycle of that console. Yeah, and to be fair, okay, let's put it this way. Can can Nintendo continue to survive without uh, ever adapting or readapting to the strategies of Microsoft and Sony? Yeah, they can continue to survive. But you yourself have said it that more and more of kids don't know who Mario is yeah. and less and less kids play Nintendo games. So what does that mean? That means 10 years from now, when they are buying consoles, they're not going to be even looking at Nintendo as the option. It, they've become this generation and to a certain extent, last generation, they became complementary boxes already. For sure. So either they remain complementary and they will continue to decline in market share, or what they do is they adapt and try to get a, a box that can compete with the other two and hold its own in terms of being able to offer third-party support and not just rely on being a Nintendo box. All right, right. so a uh, question for both of you. Can either of you see Nintendo making a box that... Isn't like gimmick isn't the right word, but I'm gonna use the word gimmick just because I don't have another one for it's it. It's the perfect word. 
Yeah, that doesn't have a gimmick to it, like, you know, the waggle, like this big gamepad. Do you see them making a console that, okay, internally, super similar to PS4 and Xbox One, so, like, Final Fantasy 16 can be on all three, and with a regular controller that you yeah, don't... Let's just, let's just make our predictions right now. What what do you think the Nintendo NX is going to be? We'll go one by one and just give me your your quick pitch on what this box is going to be. What we think it will be or yeah. what we want it to be? What, what you, you think? Think, it's, think. Okay. Your prediction, yeah. Go, Max. Um, I think it's going to be Nintendo trying to do, like, a more traditional box in a sense uh, they're going to adapt more of the modern techniques especially because what they have to remember is that this box is going to be competing with the PS4 and Xbox One right we, we agree with that it's not going to be a box that tries to say oh we're the next generation right so they're going to have to compete with the features that are available on the PS4 and Xbox One I I wouldn't be surprised if they still did some sort of controller gimmick or VR or whatever is like their next thing, but I still think that internally and just in terms of fundamentals, it's going to be the more traditional box we expect, like to have an online built-in service with it that functions, easier system of uh, friend sharing and all that. Uh, so I, I think that that's what this box is going to be an attempt at. All right, I'll go. Um, I, I hope I'm wrong, but I think this is just going to be another very weird thing. I think VR is going to play a part in it, I think. And can you guys still hear me? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay, because it got eerily quiet. Um, just I, I, we just have so much floor. respect and focus <laughs> yeah. for you right I now. I think they're going to stay as a supplementary box, and I think maybe their next attachment to the masses is on mobile. So on mobile, they're going to be the king or, you know, whatever. They're going to be huge, and they're going to stay a good secondary box. Like, I see no point in owning both a PS4 and an Xbox One and not Wii U. Buy one of those and buy a Wii U or whatever the next Wii is, and you'll be a happy camper, I think. So I think they're gonna just they're gonna accept that that's their position, and that's what it's gonna be. I think. Uh, I hope I'm wrong though. I I think that whoa, they whoa, are. Whoa, whoa. Sorry, he Go he ahead. says you hope you're wrong. So you want them to do something <laughs> different? No, 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 no. Yeah, no, I want them to do what you said, okay. basically. Oh, okay. I would like them to go all in on a mega machine, you know, even stronger than PS4 and Xbox One because they next year develop it. But if I had to predict, based on the way they've been talking, based on the the fact that Iwata has been on the hot seat for a while, Miyamoto is approaching the end of his career, they're talking about this integrated system online service being the, the core of their new thing. The fact that console sales are dwindling in Japan, I think that they try to go all in and make a box that is a home box and a portable box. It gets their console back in the living room of, of Japanese people. It allows them to kind of unify their platform, which has gotten completely spread crazy. They use mobile as their way to target the younger, on-the-go, cheaper um, type games and gamers. And then this thing that can play games at 1080p, 60 frames per second, at home or take on the go for almost a remote play style experience without the need for an internet connection. Now you're kind of getting to a point where maybe this is a box that, while it doesn't have the next Grand Theft Auto, doesn't have the next God of War, doesn't have the next Uncharted, it does present such a intriguing proposition that parents, kids, maybe even hardcore gamers want to dive in just because it's doing something that... I don't think that they get away from innovation and gimmickry. Like, that is kind of their MO. It always has been, mm. whether it's... Really? GameCube? I mean, the GameCube... Wii U? Do you Super think the game, I mean, <clears throat> Super Nintendo, yeah, because the back 3DS? then... 3DS? All the iterations of the 3DS? I mean, the 3D was the Well, yeah, I know, point but, of that but other than that, every iteration sentence is just changing no, in size. No, but I, I, to me, it's like they go innovation, like then like sort of a reconfiguration slash improvement. This would be their chance to do something brand new. You know, the Wii U was the improvement of the Wii... Yeah, I mean, in the same way, the GameCube was kind of the improvement on the N64. As they try to standardize, they seem to fail more and more. So yeah. their biggest successes seem to be when they go unique, whether it's the, the DS with touch screens, whether it's you know the 3DS and 3D, the Wii and motion control, something that says, hey, look at me, buy me, buy me, buy me. Because remember, at this point, there's going to be 35, 40 million PS4s out there. How do you compete with that? Yeah. You know, it, Unless your box is that much more powerful... I don't know how you would ever... Then, more power is not the key. 
Because if people really want more power, they're going to go to PC instead. Like plus, it, plus, considering Nintendo's nature of not wanting to lose money on their boxes, right, they don't to. do that. They're not going to be able to afford to have an expensive. Like, if they want more power, they're going to have to price it like five fifty, six hundred dollars, maybe even higher than that. You know, they're abandoning the Wii name, right? Like, there's no way this yeah, next thing is no, a Wii. Plus. I think that's done. No, I think that they've realized that they need to rebrand. So, I, I honestly think it's going to be called NX. Like, and you're going to pronounce it as Nex, like Nex. <laughs> That's what NXT. I <laughs> they made it clear that that's just a code name, I think, and I don't think it's gonna stay. I, I don't know. I, I hope. We'll I don't know. Maybe NX stands for like Nintendo X, Extreme. like X Factor, or X, the other like, thing I'm thinking is X Cross, like portable home. They like inner. Yeah, Maybe. that could be. A, yeah, it could be just called X, the like Nintendo X. crossover type thing. I don't know. Let's talk about some games that we can actually play right now. Do uh, we want to talk about uh, Zelda's potential? Uh, ooh, yeah, oh, yeah, I mentioned that. Mentioned that. Bring it this our way. I was going to bring it up before, but yeah, um, there was an article. Well, not article. I guess it was published as articles. Uh, but there was basically news that came out that on it wasn't Amazon America. It was UK, wasn't it? Yeah, it was UK. Yeah. yeah. Um, by mistake, there was a leaked date uh, on Amazon for Zelda, which was June 26th. Uh, it was then quickly taken off and put back as basically like you know at the end of this year, sometime or something, yeah. whatever it says. It's a so, do we think that there's any um, validity to that? Was that just literally a mistake, or is there a possibility that they literally come out at E3 and say, "Oh yeah, and the game's out in like a week and a half"? No one would be happier than me if that happened, but I don't think so. I think yeah, that's, plus, I think, they wouldn't go up against Batman, right? Yeah, I think that's her. If the game comes out this year, which still fingers crossed, um, I think that's her big fall game. If it is indeed this year at all, so uh, I don't think it's coming. Um, the only way I'd say it's possible is based on what they announced today. If all of a sudden their timeline is just diverting course, like maybe you do push out Zelda as quick as you can to get the summer sales, to get you know build up a bigger library before Christmas. You can come in with Smash, Mario Kart. I mean, they got Mario Kart DLC in May. They try to keep these games around. It's not like they release and go away. So I think well, they have to. They don't have anything else to sell. Right. So ninety percent no, but it would be a splash. It, it would be their way to make a splash. If they're not going to talk about this next console, this E3, and they're not going to talk about big Wii U games for twenty sixteen. Yeah, I mean, what do they talk about? What the heck You're do right. they talk about? Yeah. And, and, and the other point. thing, and Zach said maybe they're shifting because of this, but they had promised that Star Fox is coming before Zelda. So then we'd get Star Fox next month or something. <laughs> you get, you get so, both, June 25th and June 26th. Uh, I, mean, I don't see it happening. Promises can be broken. I don't. I just don't see this one releasing that. A Nintendo promise will never be broken, Zach. Oh, Ever. really? Don't you say that. See, okay. like this is one of those things, Max, where eventually, if you stick with them long enough, you're going to reach the promised land. Like if yeah. it, it may not be this console, it may not be the next console, but one At day... At some point, you'll be proud. You'll be like, just, yay! Do, just do not forsake them, and they will accept you into their holy land. Exactly. Last little Let's move on. Bit. Do you think they ever... God. <laughs> Brilliant. Go, go, um, go. Do you think they ever just go back to Nintendo? Like, huh? the Nintendo? I would love that. They just call it the, the Nintendo? Yeah. I would love that. Um... Uh... I don't know if you can see. I don't know if that name has any more resonance as it used to. Like back yeah, in the day, true. it used to be like you know, grandmas and older people could say, "Oh, my grandkids, they play that Nintendo." And they're you know, playing right. a Sega Master System. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but everything was the Nintendo, right? So like right. they had that thing of like like that thing of like Q-tips, right? Like that's a brand. It's not yeah. a name of sure. cotton swab. So it's it, it it might not be a bad idea, honestly, considering how they've been naming things lately. I think the Nintendo is the <laughs> I mean, especially if they go with a joint cool. system, then they don't even need to define anymore. It's just Nintendo. Like, yeah. Uh, what if they call right. it I agree Nintendo, with that. and they get mad whenever you call it the Nintendo? <laughs> they need it to be said the. Like, yeah. Nintendo's but, weird. Yeah. Well, right. that I will agree with. <laughs> Bless them. What do we want to talk about first here in games we have played? Battlefield, Mario Party 10, Final Fantasy. Well, I mean, get Mario Party out of the way so that I can get all Nintendo footage up front. That's for the video show. We'll do Mario Party 10 last. What should it do? <laughs> Let's talk about Battlefield, because this is one... Uh, Hi, caramba. Here we go. What? Okay, fine. Skip. You want to hear about Final Fantasy 15? No, I really well, wanted I've the Mario Party any stuff. of them, because I didn't get anything. I, I was going to buy Battlefield right after this, but then... I well, think let's talk about Battlefield, I guess. Right, so fine. you can explain I why I'm saying I'm, gonna, I'm changing my mind. <laughs> Go to Battlefield. Let's do it. It's a pretty big week. You got some big releases for, for all the platforms. Battlefield Hardline, 
the delayed game, the EA, you know, run to the litter, and is it a run to the litter, or is it a beautiful, ugly duckling that turns out to be a swan? Can it be neither? Can it just be a game? I think that's what it is, right? We, <laughs> yeah. we, played, we played multiplayer together. You've played a lot of the single player. Um, yeah. And I think, yeah, I think your groan is pretty... That signifies... I mean, it's it's what, just what, a shooter. What, like, it's a stealth game, man. Like, it's... <laughs> the single player is a stealth game. It can and it's be episodic. played that way. But you could play, yeah. you could play just gunning everyone down. Yeah, but they encourage stealth. And sure. it's episodic. Like, it, it's like TV episodes, really. Like, it's weird. I, I sort of dig it, but... You know, Story-wise, is it, is it grabbing you at all? Uh, it, it's super um, uh, generic. That, that, that's the only word I can think of. Like, it, it's not anything revolutionary. Like, when you think of a cop and robber story, this is what it is, man. Like, so they, they played it pretty safe. They didn't do anything, like, you know, off the wall or try to get real gritty yeah. or anything like that. It's just... It's just interesting to me because it's like, I remember, like, a few weeks back, Gabe, you were hyped for this game. You mm -hmm. went to Hype City for this game. I did. I, I really... No, I, and I'm not even saying game it's... It's more so heavily regarded in my mind, at least, because as yeah, I mean, excited for it. it. It's a good game. Like, it's not a bad game, but, you know, the fact that I get did get so excited for it and it, it didn't end up being, like, earth-shattering and, like, different... Like, it, 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 at its core, it's still a Battlefield game. And I think I the issue is it's just it another wasn't. one. Like, it was promising to do all this drastically different stuff, cops, robbers, but the sense I got from playing multiplayer, the sense you seem to be giving me is it's it's just another battlefield and not, not the best, not the worst, but it, it's not doing what they kind of shaped it to be, which was like this unique, visceral developed battlefield that is going to be, mm -hmm. you know, in its own well, sort of space. I, one thing I will say, that I like this a lot better than Battlefield 4, so it I think works. it's definitely a step. Yeah, it's a step in the right direction. Like we had me, me, you, and uh, we had no problems um, playing the game. Mm -hmm. Like if this was Battlefield 4, we wouldn't even be able to get a match going. You know, on launch week. So, props to them for making a game that that's actually working. And, we and ran through one a bunch of the, matches back and forth real quick, and that was a, yeah. a pretty smooth experience. I mean, I, I've only played the main modes, um, but you dove into some of the other ones and said that that's where... The oh, some, are really, that. some are really cool. Like, they had this whole, like, eSports-centered stuff where uh, there's one where you only have one life. Okay. And if, if, you're the, if you're the criminals, you have hostages. If, you have, if you're the cops, you're trying to rescue the hostages. And you have one, one life... It's basically a play on on, on a counter spy a counter spy wrong game a uh, counter strike um le, uh, mode also okay. hot wires the one man we should have played hot wire that day it's basically conquest but with a moving point you know how in conquest you go you capture the point and that's how you get points mm -hmm. here the, the point is actually a car so Ooh. you have to keep the car going at a certain speed so think back to the classic speed movie you have to keep a certain uh, miles per hour for you to be getting points, and if you slow down, you know, your, your bar goes down and you're not getting points anymore, so it's really a mobile conquest, and I thought that mode was great. Uh, so, yeah, it's that one and the hostage one that I think are the two standout ones. <clears throat> and, yeah, th th those are fun. Uh, I kind of wish I had played those with people. I was playing those on my own, but um, if we were to jump back on those, I think, I think we could have fun. I had a good time with the multiplayer. I just... And Battlefield has always rubbed me this way of, like, it's not as intense or as hardcore, like... When I play Call of Duty, it feels so defined, so people are all kind of going for the same thing. It's it's very well-crafted. Battlefield just feels like it overflows those boundaries a little bit. I mean, you and me were doing one of these, uh, what's the mode called? Heist. Heist. I'm thinking of GTA Heist. Like, it can't be Heist, but all sorts of Heists. <laughs> yeah, it's um, Heist. And we're, like, in a boat, like, off doing our <laughs> own... Th I mean, there's just not... I feel like the focus isn't there. Like, you have this, this shop that you can access mid-match, or you don't have to. You can, like, buy stuff, but it's never very clear, like, why or when or... Don't, I don't you know. get better stuff? You keep yeah, it. I guess I just feel like it's not... The craftsmanship of the game just doesn't... What, what about this game screams, like, you gotta play it? Is there anything? If you like Battlefield, this is more Yeah, I, I mean, that's the other thing. Like, it seems to me, like, because you said, like, oh, it's another Battlefield. Like, some people love that. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like some people will enjoy that, and more importantly, like th that's a pretty big name in the gaming mm -hmm. industry, right? Like it's a, it's not like oh, it's just another battlefield. Like you know, it, it's 
it, it's just weird, I guess. Maybe is it a case of like you don't like Battlefield, so that's why you look at it that way, or is it a case of it's just so generic and there's nothing unique about it, and that's why you react to it? Because I almost feel like. It's one of those things. There's always like been people who love Call of Duty, and then there's been people who love Battlefield, and they're yeah. very different game like gaming experiences. But if you love Battlefield, maybe this is a, actually like a really good release. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe it is the like the super hardcore Battlefield people. They might love this. Um, and you know, I, you said it yourself. Bad Company too. To me, that's the 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 high point of the series. I had tons of fun. Um, at that time, I considered myself a Battlefield player. I, I, I was good at that game. This game, I'm not good at. But <clears throat> since then, Battlefield 3 to Battlefield 4 wasn't super different. You know what I mean? Mm. So the fact that these are now yearly releases, it used to be that Battlefield came around every, you know, maybe every other year or every three years. Now they're coming around so often. And if we have Hardline this year. And yeah, it's cool. It's a good Battlefield experience. But Battlefield 5 is coming next year. When did Battlefield Bad Company 2 release? Do you know? Like 2000s. Oh. Really? It, it could have been that long ago. Eight. It feels know. like here. Uh, bad. Bad com- I mean, I guess on. like this is a little bit of like a condemning attitude. It came out in 2010. Like, what the heck are they doing? If every Battlefield yeah, since 2010. Oh, I was impressive? crazy then. Like, what, what what are they doing? Like, wh- why are these games not doing anything to make us excited? Like, Battlefield 4 is completely broken. Hardline is sort of like uh, three. You know, was a, a solid one. If people are still saying a game from five years ago is the best in the series, and they get progressively more bland, like I don't know, but is, is it a case of everybody saying that or just us? I mean, because would I you say that if, Advanced Warfare was just another Call of, Call of Duty? Um, mm-hmm. n- no. Advanced Warfare, no. I think Advanced Warfare was a, a step up in terms of making the gameplay a lot more faster and dynamic, even more so than it used to be. So but this is the same gameplay for taking... the last three. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So why are they not taking yeah. any steps forward here? And they're using different developers too. It's not like, oh, this is just this team and this is what they do. Like, the, to me, the saddest but, part of Hardline to is be that fair, this is the oh, first time that they use a different developer. I know, but vi- what did Visceral bring to this? Like, what of their own style did they bring to this? Uh, the, the campaign's different enough. Like, it, so, so walk me through that. So you're saying it's stealth based. Like, how does a level play out? Is it like less enemies? Are you taking cover? How does this? How does this work? Um, it sort of works the way that like Far Cry stealth works. Okay. Like, you get to distract them, and then you go up behind them, uh, finish them off that way, and then you, you avoid more people coming because you're being quiet and everything. Or you can just run and gun. So is it, your it ammo goes... limited at all, or yeah, is there your, any... okay. Your ammo's li- uh, your ammo's limited the same way it's always been limited. Like it's, you know, but it's you kill someone, they... yeah, you kill someone, they have a gun, you can pick that up. <laughs> so what's the what's the motivation to be stealthy? Just the your be cool. being character. It's yeah, just be more cool. fun that way. Okay. Yeah. I mean, some some levels demand that you be stealthy. Yeah, okay. you probably can get killed. Yeah. Yeah. But that, to me, what's different about it is just the episodic nature, just the way that the story is being told. Is that I think that's what Visceral brought to this. I think Dice would not have done that. And like I said, we're getting Battlefield Five next year. So. What's the difference between an episode and a level? Like, how does it impact the story or the flow? They they uh, Gabe. By the they, way, I feel like you're on an exam, so good luck. Yeah, they have it like a TV show. Like they really did structure it like a TV show. Okay, so yeah. it ends and then there's like a recap or a... Well, sort of. Not. I guess no like recap. what is a level? What's the, I'm just trying to figure out like a level is like a moment in time and then you go. Well, a level different. plays out like instead of going like directly into each other, like you'll have like a you know big change of setting and. Okay. Uh, so kind of like Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, whatever. I just feel like no, I mean it's hard to defend Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah, it's what Call of Duty does. I mean that's yeah. what they do, right? Like the whole big like, hey, you're in this set piece, and now fast, like let's say a, a week or so to here or here or here or here. And exactly. Kind of matches. Yeah. You played the prologue in at least episode one, right? Like chapter one. I had fun. I have fun with it. I don't think it's a bad game. Like I'm happy to see this game get seven. I guess the issue is like it just feels like a blah release. Like they're like, hey, we have more Battlefield for and like that's great for some people, but all of the stuff about cops and robbers, all of the stuff about episodes, like we have nothing to say that defines this game. Why it's like an expansion pack for Battlefield Four that happens to work and they're charging sixty bucks for. And maybe that's selling a little short. There is a lot of content here, a lot of modes. Some of them sound really cool. And that's and a problem, it, by the way. Too many modes. It's, it's yeah, too many modes. Like okay. if, you know, the player base 
it's going to go to the favorite ones, right? And then that means all these other modes that are there are kind of cool, but not a lot of people are playing. You can't do anything. So, so what do we what do we need from Battlefield Five? Like, what does that game need to do? Co- consolidate it to like four modes. Like, and I know that sounds bad, but that way you, there's at least people in the mo- like in the mode that you want to play, right? Because right now Heist is the big one. That's the one on top of the list. That's the one they showed off the, in all the betas. That's the one right. that people are gravitating to. So you try to go play, let's say Hotwire. There might not be as many people on Hotwire because everybody's on that one. So there's like ten modes or something. I, ten might not be the exact number. There's a lot. There's Team Deathmatch. Um, the list is so long. I'm picturing it's a big list. list. Do yeah. You, like, do you want Battlefield Five to be a, you know, go toe to toe with Call of Duty? Do you want it to take things in a different? I mean, I guess we've seen them release now back to back games that are unimpressive. Where do they go from here? I mean, making it prettier, sure they'll do that. Is that enough? Do they have to get back to like what about Bad Company Two? In your mind, like makes that such a winner. Maps were great. The guns felt better. And so if they just refine it, they could awesome do it. Too. Huh? The campaign Which, stuff was yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. Like so there's a certain tar- like there's charm to that game. Here, there's no charm. This is just like, hey, you're you're in the military. Go do <laughs> military stuff. So if they refine things, it basically just feels like it's lifeless. I guess like that's kind yeah. of what we're getting at. Is there's not a whole lot of what is the game trying yeah, to say? I mean, say? I think that that's why, like, let's be all honest and fair about the fact that people kind of forgot that this thing is even coming out. Yeah, like, yeah, they did. A lot yeah. of people are just like, oh, wait, what, a new Battlefield came out? Like, And that's weird because it's Battlefield. It's not like, you know, some Joe Schmo game. It's, like, it's one of the biggest FPS brands in the world, and it's like, oh, a new Battlefield came out. It's just really weird that People it did forget. I saw, like, 100 tweets saying, oh, what, there's a new Battlefield game? Yeah. And how much of that is, like, EA, like, toning back the, the marketing a little bit just because of real-world events that happen to, ha- you know, coincide with the game's release? And, unfortunately, EA has no control over that. Like, I think that's a factor. I mean, you still could market it. I just didn't see a lot of push behind it. I mean, I know no, it's I mean, not I, fall I, I time. Just, it's just weird that there was just no excitement. You know what I mean? A yeah. game that was in beta and, like... Take a evolve for all the controversy that it had, but still people were well aware of the fact that it's coming out. You know, and, and it's people still that played so the beta talked like about that. it. So it's it's just weird. I don't know. I I wonder almost like honestly, I wonder if Battlefield has had because I didn't even play four. I'll be honest. Okay. Um, I'm more of a Call of Duty guy, but it doesn't mean that I don't get why Battlefield appeals to people. But I wonder if there's almost an issue with that game of where they just, instead of figuring out their own thing, they constantly try to borrow things from others. Like, with this one, it seems like they they looked at the success of Payday, and they were like, hey, let's take a lot of the stuff from Payday and adapt it into Battlefield, mix it with Call of Duty, and then go. Which is funny, because the Payday engine is the Battlefield engine. Payday (laughs) borrowed from Battlefield and did something cool with it, and now Battlefield's like, hey, now we're going to take from you. Yeah, So. so it's... It just I almost wonder if they would have like maybe for the next one what they need to do is just like go back and really figure out like what makes Battlefield Battlefield, you know? which to me is like that crazy scale, you know? It's yeah. like so that they go scale back to of vehicles and, yeah. and just recreating really a, a, a war like scenario in a more realistic manner. Whereas Call of Duty is almost at this point like superhero and cartoony. You know, it's mm-hmm. like it's it's so exaggerated where Battlefield could be that more grounded kind of realistic experience. You know? I think it just speaks also to a saturation of military shooters. Like what do we do really? now? I, I mean uh, we get like the only military shooters we get every year is like Call of Duty. I mean, I don't mean, I guess, on a yearly basis, but just in a generational basis. Like, you, me, people our age have played at least ten of these games now. Yeah, and yeah it's like that's true. How, I mean, that's why Call of Duty and Titanfall went futuristic, because it's like, we got to find some way to breathe some fresh air into this, this kind of a game. Battlefield didn't do that. They instead went this cops and robbers route, which, I mean, we'll see how sales pan out. Who knows? It, it could be a great, you know, March release. I'd be. I think it's funny that I think Dying Light is probably going to end up selling more than Evolve or Battlefield Hardline, which Evolve sold like garbage. I'm sorry, and, and I know you know we you I know you have an extra soft spot for that game. I grew sure. to love that game with the with the time we had with it, but that game sold abysmally, and, and I don't care how happy they say they are with their sales, they are not 
Well, that you wouldn't so expect them to say, "Oh, we're, we're really we're pissed ecstatic. off." <laughs> that game sold less than five hundred, a lot less than five hundred thousand copies. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so weird. weird. Majora's weird Mask, thing. the Majora's Mask re-release beat it out as far as sales go. It's so weird. It's just to me, it's like embarrassing that. To me, it isn't weird, but I, I, the only thing that's sad to me is that again, like I just wish that a new idea could have done well. Yeah. yeah. At the same time, I just think that honestly, there was reasons why that game didn't sell. Yeah. As I mean, well but Evolve it looks like it didn't do the greatest. I mean, a fresh idea like Splatoon on the shooter genre probably. I mean, barring yeah. some crazy public change of heart, isn't going to do that great. No. Yeah. And then you get Battlefield Hardline, which maybe I honestly think the most if boring Splatoon of all. Is, uh, is, if Splatoon is fun, and if Nintendo was open to modern ways of communicating gameplay, mm-hmm. yeah, I really think that that game could take off. Yeah. And by that, you because mean let us put it on YouTube. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, I just think that if they let, because if the game is as charming as it seems, which it seems like it's like over 9,000 in terms of charm and just being fun and unique and different and still being fast, but at the same time, not ridiculously Twitch gameplay, you know, like, it it it, it looks really, really neat. And if they let people share those experiences, I, I don't see why that game couldn't take off, especially in a day and age, like, look, when you can popularize something like, Five Nights at Freddy's, or and make millions of dollars with that, or yeah. I Am Bread. Nowadays, like any game, can be a massive success. Like a you goat know? simulator. Yeah, it's I mean, a like freaking a goat simulator. Like, come on. I just think it's sad that new ideas like zombie games sell super well. Perhaps Battlefield Hardline sells super well. I don't think it does, but okay. I'm just saying in general, like. W- <laughs> Good point. Good point. Good point. I mean, look, I get what you mean that we would love in an ideal world everything original to be like that's the best selling, but there's a reason why you are touting uh, Nintendo, right? It's because it's those characters that you love, right? Oh, for totally. I, so. I get that. I just think a lot of times people, gamers, complain about lack of innovation, lack of releases, and, and gamers, us, me, are the ones to blame because what do we get behind the same stuff? What do we? Well, to be fair, if Evolve gave everybody a, a good enough reason to get behind it, people would have got behind it, right? Like, let's be I mean, fair. I think that Evolve game, is... that game wasn't a flawless game. You oh know? no, it's, for sure. I it's think not it was, like uh, talking about like, oh man, you know, The Last of Us, which also wasn't a flawless game because there's no such sure, thing. But I'm sure. saying, or I already told you, it exists. Whatever it is, there, whatever game you name. Like Claw, for example. Yeah. Like to say, the so that game sells terrible. It's like it most likely there's yes, there's an element of marketing, but I think nowadays it's almost like there's so many games and so many different mediums of marketing that you can still be successful even without like you know national TV commercials and stuff. Look at Dragon Ball, dude. Like that thing shipped 1.5 million copies already. I mean, that's, that's relying Jesus totally Christ. on his name, though. Yeah, but still, how much cash does the Dragon Ball name hold? Apparently, anime is popular. I mean... Like uh, now? Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm surprised there was that much. That's a lot. Like, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> I just wow. think it's The two games of the month, probably, to me, The Order and Evolve... Uh, the Order sold like, like garbage, too. That was, like, way down there on the list. How of the much of that nine. is a product of... Like horrible mojo around launch week, just killing the game. Same with Evolve, yeah, yeah, yeah both. But, but yeah. let's be, let's also be honest. I like we said on the sh- on the show, both of those games to many gamers are not worth the sixty dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it's it's like it's a fair game, you know what I mean? It's like. On the other hand, Battlefield is chock full of content, but we're saying it's not that inspired. So sure, you get your 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 money's worth, but but it's uh, which is still good. Worth. I just wanted more from it. Like I, I know we moved off the Battlefield theme, but don't get me wrong, that that's still a good game. I agree yeah. with seven. A seven yeah. is good. That that game is is good. If you're a Battlefield player, maybe you'll love it. So I think Final Fantasy 15 is poised to get way more than sevens. Um, episode Dusk Sky, which is their big demo, um, released alongside uh, Final Fantasy Type Zero or 
Final Fantasy, I don't whatever yeah, they yeah. pronounce that thing. Sure. Yeah. Um, which I didn't touch that, but I definitely. So the demo came out, and if you bought the demo, you get the uh, Type no, no, Zero no, no, game, no. right? You buy Type yeah, Zero and you get the demo. <laughs> but let's be honest. Yeah. So Final Fantasy 15 <laughs> demo comes out at sixty dollars, right. and then you get a Type Zero as a. Right. And, and it's yeah. evident on eBay, people are selling that code for forty bucks. That shows you how much they value uh, <laughs> the game that comes with. Wow. Um, no, but it is a big look at this next-gen Final Fantasy. They've said the game is about 60% complete. Do any of us think it hits 2015? No. No. Um, I don't... Uh, what What else do they have? Who, Square? Yeah. Uh, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. I and think their then... focus was on Tomb Raider for this year, probably. Yeah. Well, re- re- yeah it, either, it either hits... I wouldn't be surprised if it hits like late this year, or does the Dying Light January release? Hmm. Uh, Either I, way... I think, I'm thinking March. March next year is what it feels like to me. I, March is becoming the time that's like hectic. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know I don't know if they would do that. And especially looking at Dying Light and how well that did. and I, I think now companies are realizing that there's other time frames than the two they've adapted to. Yeah. So, true. Well, whether you play it in January, March, December, or November, uh, it is a very revitalized take on Final Fantasy. So they've abandoned a lot of what was like the, the nails in the coffin for 13. So 13, the three games they released, and, and they made some variations along the way, but in general people complained that there was very little in the way of exploration, the combat felt very substandard compared to Final Fantasy's legacy. This game kind of flips all of that on its heels. Gigantic sprawling world, like we're talking massive open world. It, it gives you one chunk of the game. Now, how many of these chunks are there in the full game? I don't know, but like you can walk as far as your eye can see. There's gigantic monsters you know, in this lake. There's trees, dynamic events. Airships will come in and drop down robots for you to fight. Um, there's creatures in the, the forest that you can sneak by or stumble upon. A jump button, a sneak button, a cover button. Like, Oh my god, it has four buttons? Like, it's, a, it's a very <laughs> radical departure from what you'd expect. I think it's the most similar to I Final Fantasy. I know, it actually Fantasy. sounds like it makes me want to play Final Fantasy again. Yeah, it's the most, I, like, I, I, 12, I, I think. Yeah, I, like 12? In comparison to... Dave like, was insulted by that. <laughs> in the way that the combat that works, it's very real-time focused. Like, you're moving your character, positioning matters, aiming matters. It almost <laughs> borrows from, like, why are you laughing? <laughs> no, no, keep talking. Go ahead. I'm Have not... I, Final Fantasy 13? Do you know what that game was like? 13, yeah. No, I Paradigm like shifts and... Yeah, no, no. 13 Controlling one like, character? Yeah, no, no, I know. But uh, I'm not even laughing at what you think I'm laughing at. I'm not laughing at you. All right, cool. Um, there's a clown in his room. Judge him. He <laughs> no, failed. You're, you're, I saw your video. It looked it looked great. It looked fantastic. I really want to play it. It reminds me of a mix of like Final Fantasy, Dark Souls, and a lot of Dragon's Dogma in a weird way. Open fields, big monsters, um, you know, action combat, but not like Devil May Cry action, right? More like it it's requires timing. So there's blocking, there's parrying. Um, you can definitely just hammer on the square button, I play this on PS4, and not hit anything. Like, you have to be careful. You're controlling one character, you have a group, and that group is working independently of you, you know, giving you potions, dealing their attacks, doing their techniques, and then you're kind of doing your thing. They've integrated a lot more speed to it, so you can warp around, um, you can warp to enemies, you can warp to highway points. Uh, MP management is the big thing here. Uh, that controls your techniques, that controls your warps, that controls your ability to block and dodge. That bar goes down really fast, and if you hit zero, you enter this stasis state where all of a sudden you're, like, he's got a bad stomachache or something. Like, he's hunched over, he's he tired, can't move. Yeah. The way that you regain that is by either warping away or taking cover. So it's a totally new, I feel, like, model of combat. I don't know that anything has done it in this way because you're still it, – it almost evokes like Kingdom Hearts in a way because like you're selecting techniques, you're moving around, you're locking on, you're dodging, you're attacking. That's a good thing. That's, that all sounds yeah. awesome. It, it sounds amazing. And you're not, yeah. you're not like in a rope path. So even though you're locked on, I can attack and the guy can move. It's not like I like hug and follow the, the 
pathway of the monster. It's very easy to miss. Um, you like knock enemies off guard, so you'll warp into them, knock them over. That's your chance to kind of go in with some attacks. Really cool stuff with weapons. So you have, I believe, five weapons equipped at once. Um, each of them comes with a technique and a weapon. And the way that you organize them determines how they're using attacks. So you'll have like a first strike weapon, you'll have a combo weapon, you'll have a finisher weapon. Um, a lot of complicated systems, the menus look really cool. Just, it feels like this is the game Final Fantasy fans have probably been waiting for. Who knows how it pans out? I feel like it's still a little clunky. I wish the combat was a bit quicker. I wish it was more, you could get into a flow, because right now it feels like warp, attack, attack, run around, miss, miss, right. miss. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Aaron. I don't want to put you on the spot here. Go for it. All right. D every other people have the flow. It was just you that All somehow... Right. <laughs> I saw other videos that, and people were doing some cool shit. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it was you that... You let your stasis Zach, you don't have no flow. To... <laughs> so you got to... Man I, I guess I'm just saying me stumbling to this game without watching the preview stuff or anything. Yeah. That's what it was. You would have to really get a grips on it. And I've played much more of it since that first video, mm -hmm. and uh, it, I've gotten better at it. And it becomes yeah. a different ball game when you fight bosses. They're gigantic. Um, and they've brought in a lot of stuff. Like, you come up to this first boss, and it says his right eye, he's blind in his right eye. If you attack on that side, it's a blind spot. So this oh, game is cool. now incorporating, like, a lot of... As long of as they keep doing that, like, as long as they keep doing that, like, for, like, more intricate, like... Bosses, like you know, every boss will feel different. Sure. Yeah. And like, they say, like, hey, this boss is really top heavy or something. Like, you know what I mean? And then you'd have exact. to attack from behind. One thing I wanted to ask because mm -hmm. I saw, um, you know, first of all, props to you because I never watch like long videos on YouTube. Your vi your video is thirty minutes, and I saw the whole thing. Wow. And not just because Thank you're you. my friend, <laughs> but you know, it was a good video. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, it's Final Fantasy 15, but yeah. 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 The thing I wanted to ask Point at the one. end you were like pausing it and, and you set the waypoint to where you wanted to go in the world there was like uh, maybe six exclamation marks like is there like a lot of side quests that you can track at once so the way that this looks to be going um, those were all part of one quest but you definitely acquire oh. multiple quests as you go um, and then the way that the game works there's a day night cycle and at night as you saw you know from that look you pull up flashlights and different creatures come out at night I'm sure quests are going to be either you know accomplishable or not accomplishable at night. But yeah, there is multiple quests. You will be able to go multiple places. Currently I have a Chocobo uh, breeder wants to talk to me. I'm still tracking uh, the boss who ran away in typical you know JRPG fashion. He wants a second <laughs> powered up battle. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that's like grayed out in the demo. So you camp. That's the way that you kind of save and, and recoup for the night. You go to these camps. It tallies your XP at night. So almost like Persona in a weird way, but like you're you're gaining levels at night and then you can upgrade your techniques, but that whole system is not in this episode to Sky. There's no way for you to affect the leveling, which there, it says there will be in the full game, like you know, changing techniques, mm -hmm. getting new stuff. Dude, this sounds like awesome. There's and even there's, vehicle, a, there's vehicles. There's, there's just not vehicles. vehicles in the demo. Right. There's vehicles. Um, there is a, they one They need to button. release this before Xenoblade. Yeah, yeah. That's, sure. that's not happening. I mean, the one thing I do sort of go back and forth on is would I like this game better if it was just straight up tactical turn-based combat? The I don't combat look fantastic. I, I don't know. It, so it sounds like the combat. Well, it's super very cool. cool. I guess I just when I think of that kind of a game, I sort of miss, and I miss in thirteen. Ten was sort of based on my age, the highlight for me, and. That game, being able to sort of set up your battles and, and utilize the characters in concert with each other, I love the fact that I could sort of think about what I was going to do and combo, you know, this Blizzard spell with this guy's, you know... Just play Darkest well, Dungeon. Yeah, I, I guess. I just... It would have been interesting if this game was full-on exploration, full-on open world, but with turn-based battles. The way it goes now, it's all... There's no change of screens. You come upon enemies, you run away from them... Um, you can get in sort of a combat state, but it doesn't change anything. You can run out of the field. There's no... Like, yeah, but that sounds no... better because I almost feel like the issue with Final Fantasy, in my opinion, a lot of times has been like where they would upgrade or like do new things, but only in parts of mm -hmm. the game. Like they'll do exploration, it's new. Uh, but 
everything else is the same. Uh, or sure. they'll change the combat system, but everything else plays the same. Whereas this one sounds like they've l like really gone and kind of changed a lot of the elements, and most of the game feels different. So I don't know. That sounds exciting. Like honestly, I, I was this game was just like okay, another Final Fantasy. Like at oh, this point, that's different. how I feel about it. And it from what you just said, like you just sold me on this game. Like it sounds awesome. All of the comparisons you made as to elements of how it feels. Yeah, I think it's going in the right direction. I mean, they're obviously also incorporating beautiful graphics, which will get better. They have cinematic moments. There's parts where you're, like, sneaking past a boss when you first come upon him, and it's just, like, the push forward through a really cool-looking, like, tunnel. and Definitely taking elements of other popular AAA franchises and trying to incorporate that to make Final Fantasy a much bigger deal than I feel 13-2 and 13-3 eventually became. For me personally... I just wonder how much skill is going to be in this combat, especially if you can only control one character, which is the way I think they've said it goes. Sort of that beautiful teamwork element vanishes, and now it's more action hack and slash. If there's a way to combo techniques and kind of develop, like Gabe was talking about, like a really good flow, maybe that's where the practice well, makes said perfect comes in. The, uh, once you level up, you're going to be able to change your abilities and yeah, stuff, and right? So I'm one, sure that one will One cool play thing factor. that I found um, was... You can highlight sort of a like a style of your, your your character, and underneath that style it lists my warp ability. So I wonder if eventually you'll be able to change like styles and then maybe gain a new traversal ability or something beyond just like oh the different attacks. Like it seems like there's going to be a lot of customization and a, a really sweet cinematic yet also tactical combat system. I don't know how. All of the the management of items works. Like my teammates were healing me, and and using different you know like stuns and stuff. Do I have any control over that? Are we going to be able to set like pre you know presets? Kind of how you can say like oh I want this guy to be aggressive. I want this guy to you know not. But you have to have some control over. It. Like I, sure. I think something like that will be implemented. Because I don't think, like, oh, automatic healing all the time. Like I don't think it'll yeah, work. Yeah, like no, that. It, it makes a great first impression, and it tells you that hey this team knows they needed to innovate and do something different, and they have, it still maintains the pace of Final Fantasy. Though. This is not like Darksiders or God of War. You know, are not like sprinting around just killing everything in sight. There still is... A flow is like the best word, that you have to get in kind of that zone, and maybe that's what I wasn't accustomed to because I haven't played JRPGs in forever, but you do have to be in that mindset of like, I'm going to get an attack in, and I'm going to reposition, I'm going to you know use a technique, I'm going to heal up my, my health or get my MP back up, the summons, I don't know if you guys have seen this video. Someone found a summon in the demo. Man, the su I'm not even mm. kidding when I say he's like 500 feet tall. It is the craziest summon I've ever seen, and people were like, oh my... It got 300,000 views overnight. You, and, must, wow. you, must not, you must not remember the Knights of the Round Table uh, summon for Final Fantasy VII, where they <laughs> literally come from like outer space and stuff. So. Yeah, but this is that kind of thing. Gigantic Wizard Man drops down and unleashes this like holy bolt... And takes out the boss in one hit. At, it was. How's it, how, is, is there any indication of what the story is in, in the demo? Or? Um, that was one thing that struck me a little bit odd. They're a very brooding group. I almost feel like it's like One Direction on like downers or something because they're like <laughs> Noctis is just like I'd just rather be napping, and everyone else is constantly like, ugh. There's not like. I don't know, the world is so charming and inviting and, like, sunshiny and big creatures and water, chocobos. The the group is, like, nah. And I know that's kind of, like, the thing that, like, oh, they're these, like, you know, jackets and buckles and hair in their face and saving the world. But it seemed like there could be interesting dynamics because the characters do talk and sort of babble as you're walking around. They're all with you on the field. So constantly mm -hmm. they are all there, exploring, fighting, shopping, they're all there, which is a new thing, I think, um, and, and brings a little bit more, hopefully, story and, and camaraderie with the characters and then your camaraderie with the game as well. Um, it's I'm excited. That's I've something, heard, though. It, that's something. You saw it? Oh, yeah, link, it. Link, link, link it on Skype while I ask this, please. Oh, um, it is Zach. insane. It's like yeah. Zeus like with Final Fantasy art style. Whose video is it? Uh, Do yeah, we know them? Link the two quick little points I'll make. Arkes or Rx maybe gaming. Uh, two quick little points um, that I'll make. One, when you die, you go to zero health. If the boss attacks you again at zero health, 
he chops into your health meter. And then for the rest of that battle, it looks like your health meter is permanently depleted. So you can refill it up, but that's like an interesting mechanic. If you get all the way to zero where your max HP is now zero, so he keeps like hitting you at zero, um, then you get a game over screen. But there is an interesting kind of like revival mechanic there, but also a consequence. You know, so it seems like it's going to be punishing. Um, what was also punishing, though, is the frame rate. It's really bad when there's a lot going on on screen. They have plenty of time to fix it, but I will note it's really, really bad. Um, last question I have about the story. Do they sure. give any indication if this is the beginning, somewhere in the middle? or The way that it starts off, you're in a tent, and they say the car is broken down. they got to go find 25,000 gil to get this car fixed, and that kind of sets the stage for hunting these big beasts to, to get their head um, and then cash it in at kind of a bounty board. The cool thing there, again, is like, what can you do with that? Now you have almost Witcher-style bounties of go hunt this monster in real-time battle. Monster Hunter. Or, yeah, Dude. or Monster Hunter. Like, it seems like a perfect amalgamation of a lot. I hope that this continues to be that way. I hope there's like tons of environments. The whole story centers around these characters kind of driving through this land, I believe, and you know where they eventually go. I'm sure it'll be epic. Uh, I'm so Growing up, Final Fantasy was, like, one of my favorite franchises. Mm -hmm. Like, Final Fantasy VII was, like, one of the big major RPGs that I finished 100% on my own. And this thing, this summon video, God, this looks insane. Yeah, it's bananas. Wow. And it seems to back up, like, the style is backed up by substance. Like, it feels good. It does feel, like, a little bit incomplete, clearly by the menus being not there. You can't level up. So, you know, TBD on the final release, but... It's a great way to build hype, and it's it's a game where you can give this chunk, and it's not like, oh, now I'm done. I don't need to play Final Fantasy 15 anymore. You know what I'm saying? If you did this with, there's been issues with Titanfall, or if you did like, oh, a big single player demo, two hour demo for Bioshock, maybe you'd be done. But here it's like, nope. We know that what they're doing is really cool and on the right track, and like, come on, final game. So big <laughs> thumbs up for that. Awesome. That's good news. Has me yeah. pumped now for the game. I'm, th- I'm just watching the summon again. Go on. <laughs> Our thumbs will reverse course when we talk about Mario Party 10. Um, oh, no. Well, uh, wait. Gabe, did you get a chance to play it earlier? No, but I saw oh, a lot okay. of it. That game looks like poo-poo. Mario Party 10, I, I don't know what they're thinking, honestly, because Mario Party 1 through 7 were not great games. By but the like, way, ladies and gentlemen, fun. mark your calendars. Zach is speaking of a Nintendo title in a negative light. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Write it down. Remember it. Don't ever yeah. forget it. Just so that they don't say that you never do. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it's it does what Mario Party Nine did, which is bundle everyone into a cart together. When someone rolls, you all move along. It's abandoning what made Mario Party very competitive and sort of like a great party game, and instead becomes a much more childish set path excursion. The levels are gorgeous. You can be a bunch of cool characters, Rosalina, Waluigi, Donkey Kong, Spike, who's the guy that throws big spike balls from Mario 3D World. Um, Sorry. Other than that, though, it's like, what are they... I almost feel like they felt that the earlier competitive games were getting too hardcore, and so they wanted to tone everything way down and be just a fun minigame fest. Like, going around the board and spending your star, your coins on stars and you know, stealing from other players was too, too competitive. So Maybe now we they have too many emails of friendships being shattered. I was the, just the really mini, the mini games the look stuff. like garbage. Like, oh, that's not good. I, I, I saw almost like it lo- could be a mobile game, huh? <laughs> I, I saw a lot of the uh, of the Bowser Party. Right. That all looks garbage. I'm sorry. None of those looked appealing in any way whatsoever. They are so close to getting it right with Amiibo Party. Amiibo Party is you're on your own. You're moving around a board. It is the most sterile version of Mario Party ever. A square board with like one or two things that happen on the board and a mini game after every round. The graphics are great. The levels look great. It feels so weird because they could have just done a Mario Party old school style and made this game very fun and very successful and would have gotten really good reviews. Instead, they opt for this odd... I just don't get how you do this three times in a row and people say they hate it, they hate it, they hate it. Why? The redeeming factor is that the Amiibo interaction gives me hope for what Amiibos could be in the future. Like, it's obnoxious with its Amiibo interaction. Like, you have to touch your Amiibo to the gamepad and then lift it off to throw your dice. Or if you want to 
you know, do certain Wait, things. So you 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 like that? I no. just think it's no. No, what I'm saying is, it's cool to see that they're experimenting with amiibo usage in game. Besides, just like tap link to Hyrule Warriors and you get an item. Like there's actual, I touch it to the board. I remove it and it throws the dice. Okay, that is but, so lame. you like the experimentation, but all of the experimentation sucks. Y yes, but, okay, but I'm hopeful that <laughs> this will lead in due time. I just don't get how you make a game that it's like if you made Madden and we're like, hey, instead of traditional football, we're gonna do this like crazy. It's only a thirty yard field and there's only six guys and people are like, just uh -huh. give us freaking football. Like that's what I wanted from Mario Party Ten, and instead. No, it's still enjoyable. I, um, yeah, I guess. Never mind. Sorry, go ahead. Let me give you the perfect example of why this game is just sad. All right, so you're going around collecting these star bits. We're all in this little, like, you know, fun bus together, driving around. There are reverse spaces on the map. The winner of the game is the person that collects the most of these star bits. And you get star bits from winning mini games, collecting them on the board. Well, towards the end of the board, because remember, now it's a linear path. It's not a branching path, because mm -hmm. that's too, too difficult for gamers. There is a spot where you can collect 10 star bits. Now, in the course of the game, you're getting 10 for winning a mini game. You're spending some. You're losing some. You know, Maybe you get five here, three here. So yeah, getting so 10 on the board deal. is a lot. change the game, yeah. Well, Toad, being the, you know, the all-seeing eye of the Mushroom Kingdom he is, he rolls, he goes through the 10, gets the 10, lands in the reverse, reverses back, through the 10. Oh my so he god, gets he gets it again? So you could just exploit it. Donkey Kong rolls, gets the reverse, gains 20. I went from being in first place to fourth place because these guys banked 20, 30 star bits all in a row just because of dice roll, which I was like, I'm out. Like, why did I bother winning the mini games? Why did, and, and maybe that's the whole point, that this game is now being targeted to the five-year-olds. Like, I honestly don't know who they're going after. It's yeah. weird. Did you have a chance to cool. play it with anyone else, or no? Yeah, I played it with my girlfriend, and we had, mm -hmm. like, a good time. It's very concise. They don't take an hour and a half anymore. Like, 25, 30 minutes, you get some mini games in. I wouldn't say they're great mini games, but I wouldn't say they're super gimmicky. There is definitely some interesting ones. Any stand out, specifically? I just want crazy cards okay. back. I can tell you one about one about the the Bowser party where you have to blow into your controller for, for <laughs> <laughs> that would make for some funny moments. You ha you, it, it, you, if you're Bowser, you have the gamepad, right? Um, you blow into it for Bowser to throw a fireball, and you're trying to hit the other characters with the fireball, and you're just sitting there blowing. Oh, God. <laughs> Howie Mandel would hate this game. It's so uh, unsanitary. Some of them are really bad. Like the one that <laughs> there's one where you have these little goombros, and those are like the goombas that are okay. flat-headed. I don't know why. Oh. <laughs> and there's a there's two sides. I know what you're going to talk about. If you want to. And literally all you do is try to hit the Goombros to the other side. There's like 50 of them. And all you're trying to do is smash A. So Donkey Kong's like slapping the Goombros to the other side. <laughs> it's it complete. Like, uh, their own version of Cookie Clicker. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but, but you're moving around, so sometimes you totally just miss. Okay. It's... It's Let me tell you about another game mode, Matt. Yeah, tell us. Yeah. All right. Here All we right. Go. You're, you're, you're this sitting is not there good, though, because I have that game on free order. <laughs> nah, cancel that. I'm so sorry. Excited. Cancel that. Go get Battlefield. Um, all right, so you have three enemy types, and, and they're all running at the screen in a, in a mass wave. <laughs> and this mini game is you looking at the screen and picking oh. which enemy type there was more of. Oh, so, so you just have to guess based on the like what they r ran by. Yeah, you literally oh. don't even need to touch the control for the. So here's game. another game. You uh, you're you're on this spinner and your character's going like, because ah, they're being spun around this, yeah. this spin around a rope. Sorry, Zach. You know that that's gonna become a gif, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so you you press A to release, and then like they land, and there's different point values, or you go backwards and get zero. This game must have taken like three months to develop. I don't know it. It's so strange because it's so – to me, it feels so obvious to make a, a successful title here. The, the formula is there. The foundation has been laid. The examples have been made. Mario Party 10. Buy it now for, for Wii. Like, it, it, I would probably review this like a 4 out of 10, but I had like a 7 out of 10 enjoyment sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> is it a case of at least maybe like it's so bad it's good? It's no. a case of like couch co-op with a little competitive flair can be fun with people you know and don't want to hate. Like that okay. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. But at the same point, 
when you're like, I have 43 star bits and my girlfriend is 37, Toad has 12, and Donkey Kong has 8. Oh, wait, we just went through the star bit chain of doom. Now they have 60, and we're in last place. The, the worlds are beautiful. Picture the Mario 3D World boards, like the levels, but mm -hmm. now like in a Mario Party thing. Some cool interactions. I just don't understand why we're all in this cart together. Are they trying to make a societal statement like cooperation is king? That's how you get there. The boss battles. You guys seen these? No. There's two boss battles in every board, and you're working together, but also someone wins. So, like, it's a Goomba, right? <laughs> There's five ladders. <laughs> I mean, this has to be designed by, like, Miyamoto's grandson. I don't know who made this. There's five <laughs> ladders. Wow, that's the best tagline for a review ever. <laughs> it feels like it was designed by Miyamoto's grandson. I mean, at this point, he could be, like, a 30-year-old guy, so maybe his great-grandson. There's five wow. ladders. You climb the ladders, jump on the Goomba, fall off the Goomba. Climb the ladders, jump on the Goomba. Whoever gets more hits wins, but the person that gets the final hit, which really is not skill-based and instead totally random... Mm -hmm. Gets like plus five and wins the mini game. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Man, let's move on from this. Yeah, Mario Party. T tell us about something a little bit more exotic, Maxwell. Oh, okay. Take, take us somewhere with I don't know, fanciful creatures, Chris Pratt, all take things. Take us to the oh. land before time. To the land of Lego. Exactly. Oh, so of course, uh, yesterday. Um, we got a, uh, basically our very first gameplay trailer, as they titled it, for Lego Jurassic World. And along with that gameplay trailer, which I'm guessing you're going to play, right? Lego. Uh, I'm, I'm, Jurassic Over. World? Yeah. 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 So, uh, you could be the dinosaurs, right? Yes, that was confirmed I'm in. a little while back already. I'm in. Yeah. Um, but again, it's just one of those things where they always nail getting the original, like, whatever makes the original property awesome, like, you know what I mean, that element of music and th that amazing score and then the just playing into, like, you know, the charm of, like, seeing dinosaurs come to life, be it right. if you're a kid or an adult. It's just awesome. But then adding to it that quirkiness and that goofiness that they do with Legos, you know, where a lot of the more serious moments in the movie have now been Lego-fied, so to speak, so now okay. they'll be like a little bit more funny and a little bit more with humor and such. So, again, it looks good. The trailer was only, like I think, a minute and 15 or 20 seconds, so we didn't get a lot of gameplay, per se. It was more like... Um, there was more like cutscenes and stuff, like recreations of scenes from the film, yeah, uh, or okay. films, I should say, because, of course, this is going to be all four movies. Um, but there were some cool moments of like um, even like where like there's one specific moment where you're like traversing something like where you're jumping over and there's like dinosaurs jumping in the way and trying to uh, bite at you as you're jumping and stuff. So that looks cool. It, it, it would be cool if the environment became more interactive, you know, where there's like more dangers from the environment itself. So and especially in a game like Jurassic World, that would make sense, right? I mean, the environment is dangerous. So yeah, uh, I think that that's going to be cool. So. I don't know. It looks good. Um, obviously, super short trailer, so there's not like a whole lot to yeah, say. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why I can't say much. Yeah. Like, I have some other ideas and stuff, but we'll we'll see if. Is there vocal work in this one? So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't they're, think they're uh, make it anymore without vocal work. Yeah. The they're they've not made one since Lego yeah. Batman two, I think. So since then, everything has been with audio for the characters. No longer do they go like... Rrr, rrr. <laughs> Although that has weird charm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it had charm, for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we, we spoke about this last week, and I don't know if Max was going to bring it up at all, but I just want to hear a little bit on how far you got on Ori and what you think about that. Um, I am... Um, I just started playing it. First of all, the, the one thing is like, uh, I told you before we started, yeah. um, I didn't expect what happens at the very beginning to happen. <laughs> Like, yeah. I was a little, like, a little what? sad. A, a little sad? It's like Bambi for big kids. Jesus. I was like, Gee, this is like up all over again. Yeah. Crushing my soul at the very beginning. I'm like, and I, the only thing that cheered me up now is knowing that Gabe said that the ending is happy. So the, the ending is very happy. I'm looking forward to that. Um, it's, first of all, I was surprised how difficult it is. Totally. Because you guys said that it was going to be difficult, but I was like, wow, this is like. But it's again, it's not like difficult. Like, oh, this is unfair. It's that kind yeah. of thing, like where I feel like it's, it's my fault. That pushes you forward, yeah. Yeah, it's my fault when I fail or mess up. It's not the game's fault. So I was surprised by that. 
Uh, obviously beautiful. We you, you guys talked that into the ground, and uh, I'll try to finish it by next week for sure. I was gonna yeah. try to finish it, but just ran out of time. So how far um, did you get? I am. Let me check. I saw oh, someone say that Ori and the Blind Forest is the best Xbox One exclusive. You think Dude, that holds it weight? It is. Name it. Say- I I like Ori better. I love Ori. I, I don't know how good it will be towards the end, but I told yeah. you, like, this is as good as, like... Like, I agree with you guys, it's the best game this year, for sure, already, and I haven't even finished it. Yeah. Uh, because of what it does, it's it's like, it, it's gaming at its purest form of where, like, mm-hmm. they take advantage of what games do well. They don't try to be cinematic or anything, but at the same time, it just has so much substance and weight to the yeah. stuff that happens. So, exactly. Hmm. Besides Sunset, which I, I can agree you can make an argument for. There besides is nothing that, else. Yeah, like, is there, like... No, no, not really. The, the launch stuff doesn't hold up very much. Anymore. No, there isn't. I mean, like, yeah. if you're a huge... There's very few event, exclusives. Maybe, so it's like, right, yeah. like four yeah. to, and that's it. And, yeah, I agree, though. This is the best Xbox One exclusive. <laughs> to me, Ori is holding the spot that Shadow Complex held early in the 360, which is, like, my favorite downloadable game. Loved it to death. And Ori may even do things better than Shadow yeah. Complex does in terms of like being a little bit Metroidvania with a lot of traversal. It's a fantastic game and like a yeah. must buy at twenty dollars. Yeah, I just wanted to check in with Max. We don't need to have a whole another Ori conversation. Yeah, but that's why I tried I'm, to I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Any other games that I, uh, you played I this week? I uh, Kirby. Uh, Kirby. Wow. Kirby. I can talk. Kirby. Triple Nint- Deluxe. Nint- you talk about Nint- people forgetting Boom. Nintendo. Even you're forgetting Nintendo. Yeah. I played Kirby Triple Deluxe. I finished it. I'm I'm on my adventure of completing every Kirby game 100%. Okay. Okay. So uh, the next one that I'm going to be playing is the newest release, Rainbow Curse. I'm finally getting around to it. It's still shrink wrapped over there. Um, uh, but so that's going to be the game I'm uh, tackling over the next week because I finished uh, Triple Deluxe, and that game is awesome. That game is incredibly, incredibly cool, yeah. and uh, has some really sweet boss fights and a ridiculous amount of value. For a game, because like you, you start with like three game modes. I guess that's why it's called triple deluxe. Uh, but then after that, when you complete the main story mode, you unlock two more game modes of one playing as King DDD, which is awesome. And then the other one is like a uh, arena mode, or yeah, I think that's what it's called. Um, and basically, where you take on boss fights, and the key is to try to get the best time in defeating ten bosses, and like you basically try yeah. to get your score hmm. better and better. Great game. Check it out. Available now. Nintendo 3DS. I got it for 20 bucks. It's been available. It's <laughs> no, it's just it's new. Gabe, I want to do a, a little Resident Evil check-in. Um, mm-hmm. The game mm-hmm. finishes up this week. I've heard that yep. it finishes up really terribly. I heard that. I don't know. <laughs> Great. Um, how <laughs> was this three? build? Episode 3, were you, were you cool with that one? I haven't, I haven't played Episode 3. I was sick, remember? Okay. So yeah, I'm doing that. the virus from the game. Maybe. I fit it... Um, episode 2 is the last time I played, then I got sick, didn't play episode 3, but I'm going to power through them maybe tonight or tomorrow, so, something like that, make some videos on it. So but, was it one of, those, one of those sicknesses where you just couldn't game? It was that intense of a sickness? Well, because I wanted to play, but I just wanted to make videos but on it. Playing I, couldn't, uh, oh. yeah, I yeah. couldn't talk. <laughs> Too sick for games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I always I had this couldn't. thing where like I kind of wanted to get sick so I could just lay in bed and play games all the time. Oh, come on. When we were kids, that's like the ideal scenario. But then what would happen yeah. is I'd get so sick, I couldn't even – didn't even want to play. Like, You just want like that light cold. This sounds horrible to say, but you just want like, <laughs> that, that light cold where you can't go to school, but you're like totally like fine. Your, your faculties yeah. are there. Your yeah. eyes are good, and you're like I'm diving into Super Mario – Sunshine world. Yeah, no, my problem was that my voice kept going, so I couldn't uh, make any videos. So that that yeah, you know, I figured, well, let me just wait till I can at least talk, and then I can play through this again. So the shackles well, of YouTube get you once again. Yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully we can both finish it sometime in the week, and then talk about like. The oh, big... I'm gonna play it too now. Cause yeah, so the retail release. Because yeah. I bought all the like I have it on uh, Steam like the whole pass. So yeah, gonna... so all three of us will be able to talk about it. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, you know, breaking... episode of Borderlands came out too today. Did you play that? Episode two, no? Isn't it? I out? forgot that was coming. Yeah, it is out. I saw that. Yeah. Oh, never breaking... mind. Well, I'm guessing you didn't play it. <laughs> break, 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 breaking news uh, on the business front of things. Um, Sony announced that PlayStation brand brought in 4.37 billion dollars last quarter. That's October through December 2014. Ching. <laughs> 
Uh, that's a significant sales increase of 16.8% year over year. Um, they sold 6.4 million PS4s in the fourth quarter of 2014. Um, the same quarter the previous year, the launch year, they only sold 4.5 million, which is pretty awesome that I, I read articles all the time, oh, the console market is constricting, there's less and less. Clearly not. The market, the, 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 the console market is fine, apparently. Yeah, like it sounds like a lot of people who want it to fail, that's what they keep saying, but yeah, then yeah. for some reason, yeah. the numbers keep completely defying that, like, and saying, nope, not really, it's actually doing better than any generation, like, it, yeah. it's, it's just doing substantially well, so, any I don't know, I'm, it's great news, uh, it's also good news because I feel like, uh, for a little while there, Sony almost looked at PlayStation as kind of like a throwaway Part of their, and now it's saving them. It's the only it's thing making them like money. The thing that they're focused on and they're holding on to, which is a good thing. So yeah. uh, uh, that's great. And this is awesome news because it kind of completes our earlier discussion on Nintendo. Um, they just had a, a Business Insider report. How much percentage do you think Nintendo shares have gone up so far today? What up? percent would you guess? Have gone up? Yeah, since the mobile announcement. 43%. Forty-three percent. That's massive. No. Uh, <laughs> Max is the business guy. That's why I'm nine. Asking. Nintendo shares were up twenty-nine percent on Tuesday following an announcement from the company that would start making games for mobile devices. That's. Um, I, I, see, I, I would think I, it would I be higher. Hmm. I don't think it's going to close that high though, because I just I don't know. I feel like this is a like blown out of proportion. Like I don't think it's going to be as big of a thing as we think it is. I think it's literally going to be Nintendo saying, "Here, use our IP." I just and think they a, probably view it like, "Hey, how many mobile devices are there?" And now our sales base has expanded. Yeah, no, no, of course. That's what investors look at it as because investors look at it as, "Whoa, Nintendo." Zynga, right. look how much money Candy Crush and all this other stuff is making. Okay, that's... Is, is that, Candy Crush no. Zynga? Is that them? No, no, no. I'm, uh, Candy oh, okay. Crush is, wait, it, no, it's not. No, no, no because I, cause I keep else. hearing that's, that Zynga uh, like dying. Yeah, Zynga is not doing great, but that's because they just kept stealing ideas. Anyway, right. Let's not talk about that. Um, What else? What else? Did, where are we going, Zach? Where are we going? We're going, going to City. Some, uh, oh, wait, oh, wait. City. Do we not have reader email? We're or is that... The, guys. We do, we're going to hype. we got to go Hype City first. We're okay, gonna, all right. The, the all right. readers are patient and waiting, but Hype City, that thing could blow at any second. You know how hype goes. It's there one <laughs> second, and then it's gone. So we better yeah, get it. Battlefield Hardline. Yeah. <laughs> Mario Party 10, Battlefield Hardline. We better get yeah, it. I just shattered my dreams for this week. It's like, <laughs> just, but that's hey, what happens. You can play the Final Fantasy 15 demo. Or you can finish Ori. There you go. No, I will finish Ori. That's the game I'm... Or you can play Zigzag. Do you guys have Zigzag for your iPhone? Mm. Everybody's on that now, apparently. That's is a that new thing. New, is that the new, like, threes or whatever? Zigzag is a game where you're, you're zigzagging around a path. Every time you tap the screen, you change direction. It's pretty hard, and it makes me want to punch myself in the face because it's one of those games you feel like you should be able to do super awesome on, and yet your fingers fail you over and over and over again. But da Watch. download that. My Tomorrow. fingers never coming, fail me. Coming uh, this fall, Mario Yoshi, uh, their zigzag. version of Zigzag. <laughs> yeah. It's a little Mario on Yoshi riding him, and then you yeah, just... Yeah, exactly. Happy. There you go. Millions of dollars. Hype City. Hype City. It's interesting time. Okay, come on. Do Final we, Fantasy. Do we really need to do this? Final I Fantasy. So. Are we not going to talk about just Bloodborne? It's... I'm saying Final Fantasy. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised. Gabe says Final Fantasy 15. I don't yeah. know if you have anything else to say on that. We talked... No, man, that, that summons it. video is crazy. It's just so far away. That's yeah. why. But I, I believe that. Like, if you guys can't can't decide where you're taking your No, I'm taking a Bloodborne. Okay. Well, give us give us it. What's what's Bloodborne doing for you? Same things that it did before, and then now uh, it's a week away. That, well, yeah, that's the number one reason, and then B, there is apparently some multiplayer components and such. So yeah. that sounds interesting. I'm smiling so big right now. Bloodborne. I cannot wait to play it. Okay. <laughs> you can hang up the call and play it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I won't do that. Have, I won't, you, have I won't. you tried it yet? No. Why? I had to play Final Fantasy 15. Oh, that's a good. Anyways, point, my hype yeah. city um, takes me to a moment of desperation I had last night. I was driving in my car, listening to a podcast. Not not I'm our not podcast. Right? No. Um, uh, and not that self-centered. <laughs> so you're not going to say which rate. <laughs> they were. They were no. They were talking about the Uncharted 4 delay, and mm. 
Okay. Positing that perhaps Microsoft uses this time to polish Tomb Raider 2 even further and delay it. And I had an instant response of like, <gasps> like I almost just slammed my brakes and was like, no, like this is not happening. So to me that tells me that my most anticipated game of fall is Tomb Raider 2. I think they have to release it now, especially if Final Fantasy 15 is... Really? More than Zelda? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say yeah because you just said that Tomb Raider. You were more excited for Tomb Raider than Zelda. You were talking oh, crap God. about Tomb Raider like a few I months ago. I love Tomb Raider. I've always been behind it, and I think they now have a window where they can dominate sort of the action adventure scene with Uncharted 4 being gone, and Lara can be the poster girl gone, for man. Xbox's fall. Well, well, for the main Christmas marketing season, you know, Xbox. And Laura should really work things out and develop a serious relationship. <laughs> yeah, they're just gonna sit down, <laughs> Mr. Xbox. Yeah, and it's Phil Spencer truck. sitting there with Laura. <laughs> there was a deep dive into the game with Game Informer um, a month or two ago, where they talked about a heavy focus on crafting, a heavy focus on customization, exploration, much more emphasis on puzzles and tombs. If this becomes like an open world Tomb Raider type thing, or almost, you know quest base with lots of temples, different things to do. The gunplay I felt was awesome in the first one. It could be a standout. Now it doesn't have to worry about the shadows of, of Nathan. It can just be Lara all by herself, single lady running the show in whatever... You don't movie. know if she's single or not. Don't, don't uh, maybe, maybe that's the reveal. She has a boyfriend. And, and it's Nathan and it's, Drake. Yeah, it is Drake. That's why the delay that's happened. That's the reveal. Yeah, the reveal. Right. That would be a big deal, man. That'd be quite the twist. So Tomb Raider okay. 2, Bloodborne, Final Fantasy 15. Yeah, there and we go. a whole lot of emails. Thank you guys for sending in all your questions and feedback. You can reach us at can'tstopasking at gmail.com. We see and read all of your emails. Quite a few this week. Um, the first one comes from Vivek, who is commenting on delays and, and what we talked about last week. Um, this new trend in gaming where developers showcase their games a year and a half before their release and then in between their development cycle delay the game. Push it back four to five months is really frustrating. The latest being Uncharted 4. Did we have this many big release game delays in the last generation? This console gen has been full of delays and disappointments. Just as I thought that major developers were getting their first wave of games out, but then they pushed back the second wave by a year. Why commit and tease the gamers with trailers and playthroughs if you're going to delay the game eventually? What do you guys think about these delays and the marketing strategy that is involved in getting the gamers all hyped and pumped to then be totally deflated, disappointed, and frustrated at the end of the day? Maybe this is just a cynic in me. But I think sometimes these companies announce a date knowing full well they will never hit that date, and they are only building a hype cycle. And mm, I think that's just I don't, sort of... I don't, I don't think so. No, dude, Batman... Is, you think when they originally announced that Batman was coming out um, in the fall of last year that they expected that thing to come out at all? I, I, I genuinely think that there was a, a part of them that maybe did. It's just because it doesn't make any business sense in terms of like... Because if you do it once, you can do it only once. Like, that strategy works once. Because the whole point of it is the same thing that happened today with Nintendo. Because then, uh, investors look at that and they go like, ooh, big release in the fall, so we can expect good sales bump at the end, the last quarter. Right? That means that that business is going to make more profit. So that's why you would do it, like, from a cynical standpoint. Other than that, it makes no sense to just be like, hey, let's just say it comes out this time, but then delay it. Because look, Evolve, did they benefit from that delay? I, no, I don't think that... I, I don't it think that does games... build hype, though. Like, okay, may, or maybe not that, right? Let's say they, they say, okay, game's coming out in November. It's October, and they're like, okay, maybe people aren't like as hyped for this. Push it back only because there is no hype. Let's try to get more hype behind it. I mean, there probably is scenarios like that in certain situations, but the problem that goes into that is, like, there's so much on the business end that, like, would ride on that, you know what I mean? Because it's not as simple as, hey, let's just push it back, because that's two more months that you got to pay that team uh, salaries while they're not working on the See, game. And you say it's a big deal, but it happens, like, so often that apparently it's not that big a deal. Well, like, I, 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 I don't understand. Know. I mean, there, but if but you say it's not a big deal, why are there so many studios shutting down? Why are there? It's, well, because they're it, not selling well. That has nothing to do with. Delays. I mean, I think ultimately this exactly. Is but you have to go. You have to release the game. You have to it, as soon as it's ready. You want to make it like release. Yes, there's strategy in terms of when you want to release. Like, if let's say you're Battlefield, you don't want to come out the same week as Call of Duty. It makes no sense. But go ahead. Sorry. But at the same time, it's like 
it, I, I don't think that there's a case of where they're like, oh, the game uh, is not getting enough hype. Let's delay it for another week. Oh, it's not. It's still not enough hype. Well, because not another then how week, do you but... judge? Okay, but let's delay it for three months. How do you judge? What if it doesn't have hype again? Another three months? Because by yes, that that's logic... that's what's happening, dude. No, I mean, borrowing your phrase, Max, at the end of the day, I think this is all about <laughs> money. And exactly. the way that that works is if I'm suit at Activision, if I'm businesswoman at Ubisoft, and I say, hey, we need hype for Rainbow Six, get a trailer out, boom, you get a trailer out. If the game is ready to go and November is looking great, you get to November, based on your money, you don't have the marketing, things aren't coming together, okay, we delay it for that reason. I don't think any of it really has to do with the gamers. I think it ultimately all comes down to calculated business decisions yeah. and positioning the game to make the most money because that's what those people are paid to do. Not the developers, not the PR, but the, the people making, the bigwigs deciding when something comes out, if it gets delayed, it's all a numbers game. And to me, I think all personality, all like hype, all that stuff is taken out of the equation and, and just straight up like, is this game positioned to sell? Yes, no. Done. Yes, no. Move on. Yeah. That yeah. Okay. And, and I think, don't get me wrong, I, I know there's going to be people that bring this point up. Uh, there is definitely an element of I think that Rocksteady said we need more time mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, like at, at the end of the day, once again, that's a drinking game at this point because <laughs> yeah, I say that so often. Um, but I just think that if they need time, they could – a team like that can come to Warner Brothers and say we need more time to make sure. this game polished because there is an artistic element to it too, yeah. right? Like you don't want to just release something because – yeah, it could make a ton of money. If they released Arkham Knight and it was awful, it would still make an incredible amount of money. Yeah. But the problem is, what do you do with the sequel? Because then you've already tarnished your name, and that's hard to regain. So I think that there's still an element of where there is the creative component, but like what you said, Zach, it, it all comes down to money and the executives and marketing people sitting down and figuring out, okay, in this launch window, how well could we do versus this versus that? What are we going up against? Blah, 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 blah. The truth is we'll never, ever know. It could be as simple as maybe the big climactic moment in Arkham Knight was done by a different game, and they're like, oh, crap, we need to change things. I mean, you'll never know what the reason is. Is the game really done? Do they need more time? Is it yeah. business? You have no way of knowing. I mean, it could just be a simple case of, we can attest to this in our own lives. You think you're going to finish something by Thursday, and you get to Thursday, and you're like, well, crap, I'm not going to get it done. And yeah, all of a sure. sudden, the but tape creeps up on you. You had a bug that you can squash. I mean, so many factors could contribute to delays. Absolutely. Yeah, but to me, the Batman one seems like extra like weird. You think because it's Because they announced... Yeah, it was basically a year delay. Yeah, like they, they pushed it back nine months. And, like, and they said, okay, this thing's coming out this year, and, and you know it'll be out in three months, right? You know that three months is not enough time because if you ever thought that you had enough time, push it back another three months. You push it nine months. But maybe they came across something big. Like, you know, maybe they started playtesting it a lot uh, with what they like to do is focus groups. So yeah. they did focus groups and they were like, this is not testing well. And or just think about the release end. calendar. This is Warner Brothers. Shadow of Mortal was clearly coming along really well. You feel confident in that game. You've got Mortal Kombat and The Witcher laid out in 2015. Do you switch up their dates, or you just say no? Okay, Batman will you know go to the back of the bus kind of and fill in in the June date. It sucks for gamers, sure. Why did they promise such an early date? Why were they not able to hit it? To me, it's like almost why worry because yeah. we'll never know. Um, yeah, can you think off the top of your head how many pushbacks The Witcher has had? It's like three or four, right? Yeah. And, and people right. say like, oh, I trust them. I know they're pushing it back for quality, and probably they are. But even then, we yeah, don't I know. hope they are. We don't know. Yeah. Maybe Warner Brothers said, you know what, Mortal Kombat 10 needs the, the marketing dollars, so we're going to delay you till. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. yeah who, I mean, who there's, who, there's just way smarter people that, like, yeah, you absolutely. know, have to figure that out. That's their job is to sit there and figure out I mean, when, what should come out, in what time frame, at what price, and so on and so yeah. forth. So the answer to the Rito question is we just don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the honest truth. I, I think that one point that he did touch on is uh, not the delays but the announcements. Mm -hmm. That's an issue in and of itself. We've talked about it. I think now uh, we've almost been coached to think of the fact that, oh, anything you see at A3 is not coming out for the next at least 12 months. Right. Yeah. You know, like we've been already taught to like if it's a new announcement, probably 12 months away. You know, So that's why like it's so hard for me to think that 
come E3, we're going to get an announcement and something that comes out within the next and four months. And apparently that does happen. Somebody left a comment on the last video like say, saying a few games, like recent games, like Far Cry was a big one, that you know it gets announced at E3 and then it comes out the same year. Yeah, like, but Far happened. Cry has become a yearly game at this point. No. Far Cry How? 3, Far Cry 4... Far Cry 3 Far and Cry Far Cry... 4. No, no, sorry. Far Cry 4, Far Cry... Um, uh, what Bloodborne? I mean, not Bloodborne. Um, Blood Dragon. Blood Dragons. And that, then, that was an expansion. That wasn't a game. Yeah, but that was a downloadable thing. But Far Cry 4 and Far Cry... What, what's the last Far Cry? What is it called? Why am I Three. blanking on it? No, Far Cry... Blood Dragon? Three Remastered? and 4. That's it. 3 and 4. Were they not out a year after year? No. No? No. It is okay. a repeatable well, franchise, so I get what you're saying from that standpoint. Yeah. Uh, but like, it's not uh, yearly. No. Yeah, I, I mean... There is the possibility for E3 announcements and releases that year, basically. Nintendo has done it a lot, um, and other studios have as well. I wouldn't be surprised if we get something from 2K uh, announced and, and released you know, with GTA 5 Remember, PC guys, hitting. Fallout is coming this year. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it is, but people keep saying it, so whatever. Steven wants to know, speaking of this year... Um, Xbox, PS4, which console do you think is the first to get either a, a new slim-down design or a power boost? Xbox. Because mm. it's, it's already the fatter one. Like, <laughs> like how much more are you going to slim down that PS4? Like, yeah. that thing... The, the... Yeah, but to, the, we've gotten rumors of the PS4 getting a version. We haven't heard anything on the Xbox, so I think that probably actually the PS4. Oh, yeah, who knows? Just I, would, because I would say the, Xbox just because of the size. Yeah, like it it needs a um a little time off. Internalize the power uh, brick, shrink down the casing. Yeah, it needs to work out a little bit. Yeah, I mean they might be the ones to do it because they've been doing a lot of price cuts, like promotions for like a month. So maybe they they're already thinking ahead, like, hey, if we do a slim version, we could permanently cut the price. It's already permanent. No, they they went back up on it. Yeah, th th they, they said, hey, this is a limited time thing. It's back to regular price, and then they're like, okay, never mind. It's back down again. I don't know. In Canada, there it is. I'm looking at it right now. I think they've gone back and forth quite a few times. Brendan, yeah. though, has the email of the week, and the subject oh, line is email of the week. Subject line is broken glass, and it mm -hmm. says, I recently broke the glass on my light. What should I do? Help please. replace your light. You all right? Now here, I will guide him step by step. <laughs> All right, okay, you go into go. wherever you have your, your, your broom and, and your little dustpan. Mm -hmm. you, you bend down, you broom your broken glass into the dustpan. You walk to the trash can, throw it out. Make sure there's no more uh, glass on the floor in case you're walking around barefoot because you don't want to cut yourself. After that, you go to your nearest retailer that sells light bulbs. You get one that's the same size as that one, and you put it on, and you try turning it on, and if it works, boom, you have succeeded at replacing your light bulb. I hope I helped. Who would have ever thought episode three would involve insects, <laughs> hardware tips, and, and uh, light bulbs. Zan's question, which I, I think is an interesting one. He says that when he plays games like Hearthstone, Black Ops 2, he turns off the sound and feels that it helps him perform better. How about you guys? Cody, Max, and Zach. He gets all crazy with the names. Mm -hmm. uh, now, now you're Cody, Gabe. But, uh, Cody, wants, Cody, Max, and Blitzwinger. He just wants to know if we have any like, habits that we do when we get in like focus mode for, for gaming. Hmm. I, there are games that, yeah, like, when I play Call of Duty, if I'm playing it for, like, you know, like, I want to do well, like, right, that's yeah. the goal of when I'm playing that round, um, I will I will go ahead and basically, like, you know, mute out any other audio, like, it'll be just the game and me, and mm -hmm. that's it. Like, I'll try to make sure that it's quiet and such. Um, but other than that, I don't think, like, honestly, the only games that I've always been, like, competitive in is, like, shooting games, so because of that, you need the audio of the game, because it helps you, right? Like, you can hear footsteps. Sure. Or... I think for me, the main thing I do is try to not think. You get in kind of like that zone, even for simple games like Geometry Wars or stuff like that, you kind of get in a non-thinking zone and almost like remove your mind from your, your body, so you're just yeah, like yeah, focused, focused on the game yeah, and get in right. this zone where no distractions, and I don't know about the sound thing, I always play with sound, but I get like the zero distraction and trying to like limit input so that your output is just like yeah. over nine thousand maximum yeah. strength. Well, I, I do know audio for some games like if I want to listen to a podcast. Some games like Hearthstone True. are perfect for that, like where you yeah. can be um, like listening to a, a podcast or an audio book or whatever, and then shifting your attention to the game at the same time. So yeah. some games Hearthstone are very good for that. For that. Yeah. Um, the other night. Um, I was playing Hardline, and the Kendrick album ended up on iTunes, and I listened to that. 
Uh, I, I don't ever really do music, but that time I did. And other than that, it's just podcasts. Especially, I don't. I understand what you're saying about about the footsteps and all that, but to me, like, I they never really matter as much. Uh, especially not in Battlefield. Like Battlefield footsteps, nah. Like I could just turn off the sound completely, throw in a podcast, and that's how I'll record my my multiplayer stuff for Hardline. But um, yeah, when you want to be competitive, sure. Uh, I'm never playing a single player game without the sound. <laughs> yeah, that drop those sense. stupid Joel and Ellie's. We don't want to hear them talk anymore. Um, do you guys care about Horror of the Orient? Francis writes in and says, "Hello, fellas. Did you guys have any hype for Horror of the Orient? Do you think it will eventually come out or just be canceled? Thanks, guys. Keep being awesome." Mm-hmm. I, I I will be honest. I don't know what that is. So Horror of the Orient was, first of all, a game that would probably never come out because of its title. But uh, this was what the L.A. Noir team was working on after the split. Okay. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it was kind of going to be an evolution of uh, is it an, a game based in Asia with combat and the facial stuff from L.A. Noir. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of like a pseudo sequel esque that was teased for a while and then so Sleeping Dogs, but with hopefully like. Emotional reading and and lie yeah. detection and all that stuff. Okay. From Ellie Noir, I don't think it ever comes out. I think it would have been super cool. I think Ellie Noir was, it's, it's probably my favorite Rockstar game, uh, ever. Wow. Really? I wow. just, I'm not a big GTA guy. Everybody knows that, but yeah, Red Dead though. I just thought that what Ellie Noir did. Yeah, I really like Red Dead and Bully. Those detective are work. Sometimes it fell flat on its face, but sometimes like trying to find the clues and then piecing it together, and the little, like, notebook that you had, I, I thought it came together really nicely, and um, I would love to see that, something, but I don't think it... That game will never come out with that name. Like... Yeah, no. If it comes out, it'll have a, a name change. Yeah. And then they're not going to say Orient, and they're not going to say Horror, so... They uh, will definitely not say Horror, especially yeah. now. Like, no. And Dion writes in and wants to know how we feel about the Infamous series. How well did we like the original games, and do we think there's ever any chance for a fourth Infamous game on PlayStation 4? I really love the game. would love to hear you guys' opinions. Absolutely. There will be another Infamous game. That's like a core PlayStation franchise at this point, I think. You think so? Yeah. Um, Second Son sold really well. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, th- I think that... I wonder if Second Son sold really well because there was like nothing else. Yeah, that's yeah, why you know? but it did so but, well. But it did sell well. Um, I, I love the Infamous games. I, yeah. I will be honest, I'm not a huge fan of like what Second Son did. Like In terms of story, I would have preferred for Cole to at least appear in some way. But So do you want Delson back or new? No. Nah. We'll probably get a new guy. I don't. I, I think nobody really liked Delson all that much. Like... He was alright, but what, what if they did like a competitor crackdown? Create your own infamous guy, over, right? And there's what multiplayer, the and you know you're fighting each other and doing quests, and it's more of like an open world, build your hero crackdown competitor. Maybe infamous one and two were great though. Yeah, I I don't know. I just felt like a big appeal of the first two games were those characters. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's like I, I don't. As much as it was fun to have like the powers and everything, uh, and the good and evil thing, which unfortunately didn't have as, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. What I, was I just wonder where they but, go with the powers at this point. Like, that's kind of the crux of the game well, for most yeah, people. Yeah, this is the issue. Is like at this point, because of this, the second Sun game is like it feels like what they kind of decided to do is like they think of Infamous as take a guy with a unique power, and then let's tell his story, kind of, you know, whereas to me, it was more about those specific cast of characters Mm -hmm. in the first and second, and that's why I was hoping that maybe, like, you know, at the end of the game of Second Son or something, they they have a hint at the next game being, like, a crossover between the two. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that, but... I think it definitely integrates multiplayer. It would be cool to see if there's another one this gen. There's the potential, because it released so early. No. You know, you've got years to make it happen. Um, Drew takes us to another famed franchise. Uh, he says he just wonders why people, including us, bag on Assassin's Creed. He understands that Unity was a serious flop in nearly every aspect, but he liked a lot of the things it did. Um, cool customization for clothes and, and weaponry. Um, he fell in love with Assassin's Creed 2, and that is the game that sparked his interest in gaming. Um, so he just kind of wants to know our thoughts on Assassin's Creed, and do we think it has a chance to sort of regain itself, or is it lost forever? To me, what they need to do is take a break. Like, I don't so necessarily mind it. us. I don't mind Assassin's Creed, just I don't want to play it every year because they're so similar and, and the characters haven't necessarily been 
as great as Ezio. Like I, I, I agree. Assassin's Creed 2 was mm-hmm. fantastic. Th- that game got you into gaming, though. That seems a little bit weird to me. But to each his own. Um, if they take a break and we don't get an Assassin's Creed next year, because we, we're already getting one this year, right? But if we don't get one next year and then they come back like a year or two later, I think my my excitement for it would would be, you know, much more than the fact that I know there's another one coming, and I know that when they could be putting all their resources into making one great Assassin's Creed game, they're working on like three at the same time. I think also just the open world nature of it, like. Is that played out as well? You know, you've got Watch Dogs, you got Grand Theft Auto, you've got Assassin's Creed. If they're going to keep doing, you know, climb over here and take out this target, run over here and catch this floating piece of paper, like how many times can we do that? Taking a break would be great if they're going to drastically mix things up, but I don't see them doing that. Assassin's Creed seems to be a vehicle to put in a character, put in an era, and they already have the game made. Like, Damn. here is. I mean, they're not going to take a break as long as it keeps selling, like, hotcakes. Oh, yeah, no, they won't, but I'm just saying that's what I would like. Yeah. Um, I think that what I would like, it's kind of like a a compromise, is what the Call of Duty model, like, have different teams work on every year so that then each game series could kind of feel unique, you know, like, and you could become a fan Mm -hmm. of the... uh, Black Ops or whatever equivalent of that for Assassin's Creed, right? Like maybe one of them is faster paced and more different combat, and then next year's is back to the more you know heavy narrative or something like that. Like you know where each team could specialize and find their own style, and then work on that. So that then technically you're still getting a game that feels different every year. I think that's yeah. the way to go. That's brilliant. So, I mean, this victory. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Good job. AC Victory that comes out this year is the first one being developed by um, a wholly different studio. Um, granted, they have a million teams, you know, put all hands on deck to, to finish those things, but this one is being helmed by a different studio. And from the early look that we saw that leaked footage, it did appear to be a bit more cinematic. Uh, the way that you had a fight oh, with a dude word. on top of a... <laughs> hmm? Cinematic. Cinematic. It's well, just funny. maybe it will be more narrative-driven. Maybe it will be less just like... To me, it's gotten so generic to the point where you're a lost soul who is really flirtatious, and then you find your calling to be the... Everyone needs a first Assassin's Creed just like everyone needs a first Pokemon, but gosh, like it doesn't have to be every 12 months. Vary it yeah. up a little bit. So I'm open for it to be great again. Like, yeah, that, I'm just, that I just make think all the, of us happy. Doing, doing the cyclical team thing is... Look, that gives each of those teams like two or three years to work right. on it, so it's going to be polished like the Call of Duties are, and then also you're allowing the games to feel different because each team could like experiment within their own style. So sure. yeah. I think that would be an interesting way to go about it. Are you guys ready for the ultimate game? Oh my. Are you prepared for the game of the year? This is created by Chris, and Chris writes in, if somebody combined the open world madness and weapons of Grand Theft Auto V with the destruction of Red Faction Guerrilla, they may have concocted a 10 out of 10. Isn't that Crackdown 3? Crackdown, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to know is which mix of games you guys would put together to create your Ooh. possible game of the year. So, so we got two game. games. We have a game blender. Yeah, All and right. you're going to shove two titles okay. in there and make the ultimate game. Mm. Okay. All right, Does, Zach, do you have one that you can go first so that we can think for a moment? Yeah. because Yeah, I, w- I would say Mario and Zelda. So... This is an easy one, but Just a I want... Just platformer with Link? I, I want, no, 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 no. Other way around. <laughs> oh, I, want other way around. A, I want a sprawling Mushroom Kingdom adventure. Like, I want to go to Luigi's okay. house. It's like Paper Mario, but super awesome graphics and combat. Like, real okay. time. Hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Um... Mario's like Rosalina. Like, you're my true bae, but we got to say Peach because she's my OG girl. <laughs> you're my true bae. <laughs> oh, my God, Zach. <laughs> you took it there. Huh. What are you guys blending up? The blender, okay. it's, it's running out of power here. Again, all right, this is super rushed because you kind of put us on the spot, right? But give me a Metroidvania Zelda. Okay. Give me that. So it's like Dark Siders with Link. But even more... Yeah. Like a contained environment? Like he's in like Ganon's secret... No, no, no. I'm, th- I'm talking like Ori in the Blind Forest, but with like a little Toon Link. Oh, so a 2D game. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Um... Give me, oh, Give me Ori with Link, yeah. All right. And again, that's super rushed. I, I wish you would have told us about that even yeah, before. Yeah, I honestly started. can't. Like, I'm uh, the problem for me. I'm more looking at like games, and then I'm looking at like 
franchises that I would love to like take that model. Okay. I can't. I don't know. I'll, I'll do Maxis for him. Justice League with Rocksteady's Batman. There you go. I'm, yeah, I'm but joking. Justice League is not a game. Like I mean, you you, oh, you, know, oh, you sure. see, this is the problem. Because sure. I would what I would pick is would be Guardians of the Galaxy and Mass Effect. Oh but, my god, that sounds crazy. That uh-huh. would be cool. I, how about any game with Zombie U? Like the way that that game handled sort of the rogue like die, go back and recover yeah, your equipment yeah. mm-hmm. in some other way it would be pretty darn awesome. Like even Assassin's Creed, like you have this stable of assassins, they go out and do their missions, come back and die and then you go and yeah. recover their intel or whatever. See, the very first thing I thought about was uh McZelda with Fallout, but then that might be what that might be what this Fallout what this Zelda is, so I would say here's one that I'm just looking at the shelf of games that I have next to me here. Mm-hmm. I, I would do Destiny with Darksiders too, like that world, okay. but with Destiny gameplay, so that it's actually like colorful and cool and unique. Darksiders yeah. too? Yeah. Third person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, with so gameplay, it'll, 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 the world of Darksiders. <laughs> with Destiny's uh, gameplay. With Destiny's uh, shooting mechanics, because so I I'll, like Destiny's shooting mechanics. I'll take That's retail awesome. Destiny. Retail Destiny blended with Promise Destiny so that we have one true Destiny. <laughs> hey, its destiny is to be great, so no matter what, eventually it will it will happen. I, I don't know. Like, honestly, I wish I could like think more because the problem is like mixing gameplay. It's like even with your example, it's like you're really – like you're not really mixing gameplay. You're just taking the character from this game and then. <laughs> Throw it. Yeah, you know I get what you're mean? saying. So talking it's like, about like actual actual mechanics yeah. combining so, those. So that's the hard part. It's like because taking characters from one thing to another is like that. That's what we kind of said. Whereas. Yeah. I, well, no, I I want the 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 mechanics of. Yeah, your answer was the most like actually I think fitting on the question. So because I think it, it's actually a harder question than I thought it would be. Because I'm yeah. uh, anything that I look at, I'm like, ooh, I'd love those characters here. But I mean, honestly, I, I could say something like maybe like Skylanders or something like that, and then take like Pokemon. But. I got yeah, a good one. Bioshock too. and Dark Souls. So it's still a first-person shooter with powers, but you're much more tactical, much more conservative, and when you die, they can do anything with all the infinite worlds or whatever. You could go back and have to recover your gear and sort of save this crazy world. It's like super colorful, crazy environment, but Dark Souls level of difficulty and patience mixed with mm-hmm. kind of like the Bioshock powers um, and unique settings. Yeah, Bioshock and Zombie U could work too, where mm-hmm. it's like different stories told based on which characters you killed. All the zombie bookers come after you because there's like thousands of them apparently. Yeah, cool. That would be cool. <laughs> All That's right, a so, question. It's a great question. I'd love to yeah. hear some comments in the comment yeah. section below. What can you guys come up with? Probably going to get us. way more creative than us. Pokemon Email us with iPhones. With... Wait, that might happen. <laughs> Email us at <laughs> can't stop asking at gmail.com. Comment down below letting us know uh, your ultimate combo game and what you think of Nintendo's next consoles, Final Fantasy XV's hype, and the potential for Zelda U in June. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I love how we talk zero about Type Zero. Like it's literally. I didn't play it. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't no, play I know, it. but I'm just saying it's funny how like the game comes out. It's and apparently a game the game is great with a demo. <laughs> It's been reviewing really well. Like the game is apparently great, but it's Final so Fantasy funny is like that. <laughs> That's yeah. uh, pretty Demo is the reason pretty crazy. Why buy that game. <laughs> this week coming up, we've got Bloodborne, which is going to be a massive focus uh, of the next show. So look forward to that. I am heading to San Francisco to play Evolve. I can't say what, but you can probably. Uh, figure out what I'll be playing there. The embargo will be up by next show. Uh, I was so, gonna make a bad joke. Yeah, right. I can I can talk about that for all the 50 people that apparently still have the game or whatnot. Yeah. Um, Resident Evil Revelations wraps up. Is there anything else on the 24th? Oh, Life is Strange episode two will be. Yeah, awesome. that's a, yeah, so that's, a, that's the one I want. We might even do a spoiler cast on that. Maybe even segment off Life is Strange. Yeah, I think we I feel like, do. Yeah, Blood, Bloodborne's gonna dominate. We can set, take uh, Life is Strange to its own strange place, and we will yeah. see you guys then. Thank you so much for watching, listening, tuning in, downloading. Make sure to check out the show on both platforms, YouTube and iTunes, for double the fun and extra hugs for us. We'll hug you back with a great show next week, this same time, this same place. Until then, follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash volatilegabe, twitter.com slash blitzwinger, twitter.com slash ghostrobo. Any other plugs or comments? All right, yeah, two things. I don't think you introduced us in the beginning. I did. Yes, you did. You did? Remember, the sickest <laughs> co-host. Oh, Gabe, your sickness sure. is getting your head now. Yeah. Wow. No, Gabe is still I'm, recovering. It's, it's a zombie fine. virus. Um, 
What's thing number two? And, and, no, oh, the other thing, like, yeah, um, the support on iTunes, it's still paramount. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't left a review, do that. Be our best friends. We'll be your best friends. In re- no, we can't use that. Somebody does that. Um, never mind. <laughs> Gabe just God. failed. <laughs> Dude, just I, it's great if you can. Take appreciate it. a Thank piece you so of much. this key lime pie off my wall. There you go. Virtually deliver it holographic meatloaf style to your doorstep. Mm, that's yeah. it sounded good until you introduced meatloaf and key lime pie together. Like, <laughs> oh, that's like Plank, the, all right. Plankton's email email food. here. Email your grossest food combinations. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Everything <laughs> combination. <laughs> find find your favorite YouTubers and combine them. Find your least favorite YouTubers and combine them. Uh, that would be uh, that would be a dangerous. Uh, uh, do you guys have a YouTube combo? If you could combine two channels. <laughs> Uh, we can't say, nah, man, we, we're not going to do that on, on air. Get us out of here. So that is going to wrap things up for episode three. We'll see you guys in episode four. Pick up your Bloodborne. Join the discussion. Make sure to email us, can't stop asking at gmail.com. And until next time, guys and girls, we'll see you all later. Baby. <laughs>